Zoom basic for beginners. And yes, these are pictures of me throughout, throughout life. So you, you get a little brief window into my world. So for the first hour, we're just going to go over Zoom basics, how to use Zoom, how to share your screen, making sure you're sharing what you think you're sharing, those kinds of things. The second hour, we'll do a guided tour of both the District 56 and the international website, find our way around, find out what's there. The third hour is Elementary Explorers, where we're actually going to dive into the to pathways and what it's all about with the navigator by the by the time we're through with that session, you'll have a good, a good handle on, on the navigator and how to use it, where you can go to get some help for pathways. And the last hour, which I'm calling middle school madness, we're going to practice moving around base camp. We're actually, if anybody needs to take the assessment, we'll walk them through the assessment and pick a path. So th this was designed in four hourly segments. There's only a couple of us here for the first hour, but others may join us throughout the morning as, as the course progresses, because everybody was invited to join in at the point they felt um, comfortable. So if you're starting out with this, my assumption is that you want to learn a little more about Zoom and just how to use it with everybody doing their uh, online meetings and virtual meetings. Zoom is the platform that we're using in District 56. You may be using something different at, at home or in your office. Teams, Citrix, there are several different platforms. They all operate essentially the same. Not exactly, but if you can find your way around Zoom and navigate through Zoom, you can usually poke around and find your way through some of the others. I've used Citrix, I've used WebEx. So they're very similar in how they work. If you get comfortable in one, it'll help you out. All right. Are we ready to start? Got a thumbs up from Celia. So um, Perry, you can go ahead and I don't know if you have video that you're willing to share with us. It's, I do a lot where I talk to folks and I interact. So um, if I can't see you, that's not gonna stop me from calling on you, just so you know. So be ready with that mute button and be prepared to join us. The first section, Zoom basics for beginners. What we're going to do is go over the basic Zoom commands. I'm going to show you different Zoom screen arrangements and hopefully help you get comfortable changing around the things on your screen so that you can see what you want to see. And then we want everybody to get really comfortable sharing their screen. And that's going to be important for later because, for example, in our second section where we go through the tour of the websites, the end of that is a scavenger hunt where I will give out something, you know, I will, will ask everybody to go find something on the international website and the first person to share their screen is considered the, the winner for that. So we're going to be uh, getting comfortable sharing our screens and moving around in Zoom. And uh, Fatima has joined us. She was with us, I believe, last Wednesday. So. Thank you for joining us, Fatima. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Let me start with the, with the basic controls that you're going to see on your Zoom screen. In the lower left-hand corner of your screen, you're probably going to see a little microphone and a video camera. And what I like to, to make sure people understand is if that red line is through either one or both of those, if it's through the microphone, we can't hear you. If it's through the video, we can't see you. In order for us to hear and see you, both of those need to be open. So you can click on, on, on them to get them started. Ah, there you are, Fatima. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for joining. So make sure that your microphone and your video um, are available. With, with only a few of us here, if you want to leave your video, I mean, we can all leave our video on and that helps us see one another. And, and, and for me, it helps me see whether I'm going too fast, too slow. I can kind of see your faces and read what's going on. Next to the video control, you'll find a participants button. It usually tells you how many people are in the meeting. So like if we look at our participants button right now, we would see, I believe, five. And, um, yep, five. That allows us to see how many people are there. If you click on that, it will actually open a separate, it'll open a window over to the side of your screen. 
and that window can be popped out. And when you look in that window, you're usually going to be the top person, and then you'll find the host. So in this case, it's Elizabeth. And at the bottom of that participant screen, you'll find places where you can give some reactions. Raise your hand. You can respond yes and no. You can ask somebody to go faster, go slower. There's a thumbs up, a thumbs down. There's a I've gone off to get a cup of coffee. <laughs> there's also there's little icons down there that you can use to communicate with us. So take a look inside the participants window. Next to the participants window, there's the green share screen. We're going to spend a lot of time on that in just a few minutes, so we'll come back to that one. Then there's the chat, and again, the chat, if you click on it, it's going to open over to the right-hand side, typically, on your screen. That gives you a chance to see chats from everyone, and you can also send individual chats. So if you want to talk to one person, instead of everyone down at the bottom, you just click on the little, the, the little V, looks like it's going down, a little carrot going down, triangle, and you can pick from the list of people who are here, and you can send a private message. If somebody has sent a message, you can just click on their name to send them a private message. That's all available in the chat window. A lot of times we'll share things in the chat window that you may want to either download or save for later. You can always copy and paste that into either a Word document or something, you know, notes on your screen. But feel free to use the chat to communicate with myself, with um, Elizabeth or other folks in the, in the session. Any questions over the basic controls? Everybody can find their controls. You can see them. I've had people say, I don't see mine. Move your mouse. And if you move your mouse down towards the bottom of your screen, if they're automatically going off screen, they'll come back on. OK. All right. Let's talk about what we see in Zoom. When Zoom comes on, it typically comes on by default in active speaker mode, which means there's going to be a big picture of somebody talking and then little pictures up across the top here. And I swiped this from one of the Toastmaster meetings I've been, been going to lately. You can see all the controls we just talked about at the bottom of his screen or the bottom of the screen here. This gentleman was speaking, and then that's me up there in that corner. But you can see all the people in the meeting across the top. And if there's more people, then it will fit across the top. There'll be a little blue arrow that you can click on and go back and forth and find other people. So this is called speaker view. The other view that's very common in Zoom is called gallery view. And that's this view, where instead of having one large screen and multiple little screens, they're all about the same size. And in this, in this view, the way you can tell who's speaking is there's a little yellow box around the speaker that highlights the speaker. In this case, it's Kathy. But um, that's how you can tell. To switch from gallery view to speaker view, if you go towards the upper right-hand corner of your screen, if you're in speaker view, you're going to see a little, it looks like a tic-tac-toe board. And if you hover over it, it'll say gallery view. You can click on that to change from speaker view to gallery view. If you're in gallery view, where you see all the little pictures and you go up to the top right-hand corner of your screen, you're gonna see what to me looks like the clapperboards from the old movies where they would do a scene change, and you know, take one, take two, has a big picture and then the, the little pictures on top of it. It just mirrors what you see on the screen. That's how you switch between the two. Here's a, a good picture of that. The gallery view has what I call the tic-tac-toe board. So I'm in speaker here. If I click on the tic-tac-toe board, I'm gonna go to gallery view. This is in gallery view. I go up to that movie clapper board to change to speaker view. The third view is side by side. Now side by side, is only available if somebody else is sharing their screen. So I'm sharing my screen right now. So side by side view is available to you. But if nobody's sharing, you can't get the side by side view. That's one of the most common questions. I've lost side by side view. How do I find it? The first thing to ask is, is somebody sharing? Because if nobody's sharing, you won't have side by side view. You can have both speaker and gallery view in your side by side. So you can still just see one person speaking, or you can see the whole group. 
while you're in side by side mode and we'll talk about how to change that. It's the same thing. You just go up to the upper right hand corner. You can see here, there's a little tic-tac-toe board. If we clicked on that, we would go to gallery view. In my gallery view picture, you don't see the little clapper board up there as well, but it is up there. So how do we get to side by side view? To get by side by side view, while I'm sharing, there should be a little blue bar, a little green bar, I apologize, a green bar across the top of your screen, and it's going to say you are viewing Carolyn's screen. And if you go up next to that, there will be view options. Select view options, go down to side by side mode, and it will put it into side by side mode. Once you're in side by side mode, you're going to find a little adjustment or a dress, uh, dra drag slider, I guess is what they call it here. That slider is really cool. If you move it to the left, the presentation will get smaller and your picture of people or the gallery will get bigger. If you move it to the right, the presentation will get bigger and the, the view of the speaker or the gallery will get smaller. At, at this, yes, ma'am, Cecilia, go ahead. Button. How come I only see two options on my view option? I don't have the, all this percentage and all this stuff on it. Uh, it depends on what kind of uh, subscription oh, you have mind. to Zoom. Find it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> to fit, fit to window. <laughs> Got it. Ah, uh, there you go. Thank you. Okay. No worries. So what I'd like for everybody to do right now is put your, put your, your, your view into side by side so that you have a chance to see not only the presentation, but our group as well, or the speaker, whichever you prefer. And <clears throat> it is really a personal preference. It makes no difference to me whether you're in gallery view or whether you're in speaker view. I can't see what you're seeing. Um, that's one of the tricks to Zoom is you can't tell people, look here. You actually have to either point with your mouse if you're sharing, or you need to be very specific with your directions, upper left, lower right, and so on. So at this time, if you would, go to the top of your screen, find your view options, and put yours into side-by-side -side mode. Now, one thing we learned earlier this week was if you have multiple screens, if you are using two screens instead of just one, your computer may automatically split out the presentation onto one screen and the people or the gallery view onto the other screen. And that's, that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that, um, but not everybody has two screens. So if you only have one screen, you still have the opportunity to split your screen. But if you have two screens, it, you, your, your computer may be set up to go ahead and split those out for you, that's fine. Any questions on the view so far? All right. One of the things that you can do in whether you're in side by side or whether you're in the standard is if you have it on speaker view, that's the one with the big picture. Have it in speaker view like this gentleman here. The speaker automatically is selected. If you want to select somebody other than the speaker, then you pin them. So let me give you an example of that. I am going to Let's see, I want to, if you pin somebody, the way you do that, it, um, let's go to, everybody go to speaker view. So you're looking at it this like this. You've got the, the presentation on the left and the speaker over here. Go ahead and take it off of side by, I'm going to stop sharing. That's what I'm going to do, stop sharing. I knew I had to do something here. There we go. <clears throat> and I'm going to use my laptop. It turns around. And you can see my screen. So right now, I have it on speaker view and, and I see Cecilia. If I want to change that and pin somebody else, I come. Let's see, I got to remember how to. T there we go. I'm coming up here to Fatima's picture, and there's three little blue, there's a little blue box with three little dots. I click on that and it says pin view, and now I've got Fatima. Even though none of you are talking. Carolyn, how did you do that? Now that you turn that, you turn your computer around? Yes, I have three screens. I have oh, thank my you. laptop. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say. 
I'm magic. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> sorry. I should I should have warned you about that. Yeah. Now this okay. is what I've done is turn my laptop around. So instead of seeing me, I'm showing you what I see. And I'm doing it this way because when I am presenting, if I try to share with you what I'm presenting, you don't see what I see. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so when I'm in, when when anybody is in speaker view, if we want to pin somebody else, if we wanted to pin Elizabeth, we would just go to her picture. There's a little blue box up there. So practice right now, pinning somebody to your speaker view. All you have to do is click on that blue box, pin video. And there we have Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. Now, if we don't, if we want to change it, we can go pick somebody else or there's a little up here now, just to the upper right, uh, excuse me, upper left of Elizabeth's head, you'll see one that says unpin video. And now it'll go back to the last person that I pinned. Carolyn, are you going to talk about why that's important? In my club, we have the speaker pin whoever is the timer so that they'll be sure to see the timing light. That's that is exactly that's exactly why that's important is so that you can pick who you're seeing. It also means if you're the speaker and you're sharing your screen, um, you want to make sure that you pin the timer to the side of your presentation so that you can make sure that you see them. Now, if you have if you're doing it in side by side mode, um, let's see if I can. If you're doing it in side by side mode you can still see all the people. So if the timer is using the, the, the red, green, and, and yellow backgrounds, you can still see them with the gallery view. And that's one of the reasons I teach you about the gallery view is because then you can see more than one person um, while, while the presentation is going on. But I want to give you a chance now to practice actually changing your views. So practice changing your views. Everybody go to gallery view. Go to the gallery view and you should see there's now seven of us. You should see seven little boxes. You can make faces at each other. You can wave. So you should be able to see all seven of us at once. And so we got a beautiful picture of Abdul there. Abdul, you're going to turn on your video so we can actually see you. And Faye, we see Faye has joined us. Elizabeth's doing her hair. I could do that. It wouldn't help. My hair's gotten too long because of COVID. All right, I see a thumbs up from Cecilia, so she's able to get into gallery view. All right, now let's all go into speaker view. Go into speaker view, and if you ha don't have anybody pinned, you probably see me in the big screen. Practice pinning. Pin Cecilia and put Cecilia in the big view. You can see Cecilia in the big view, so now it's your time to shine, Cecilia. You get to wave to everybody or make faces at them. There you go. <laughs> All right, now let's put, um, let's see, we've got somebody else, Fatima, let's put Fatima in the big view. There we go. Abdul, you're on here twice. You must have a phone and a computer going or something. Can you hear us, Abdul? Nope. We can't hear you if you're talking. Check on the lower left-hand side of your screen for the mute. You can click on that to unmute, or if you have a laptop, you may have a mute key on your laptop. I'm wearing a headset, so I have it on my headset. Everybody's is a little bit different. Cecilia, you have a question? Um, I've been to some meeting, the host got the authority to unmute the attendees or mute them. So do you, do you have yes. that? Um, actually, Elizabeth is asking, acting as our host, and she can mute folks and unmute them if she muted them. I don't know. If she, I don't think she can unmute them if they muted themselves, though. I think if they muted themselves, they have to unmute themselves. Correct. So. I'm, I'm trying to unmute Abdul, but he just typed that he'll unmute and start the video later. Ah, okay. He's, he's not quite stage ready, apparently. I understand. It's early on a Saturday morning. Not everybody's stage ready at 7.30 on a Saturday morning. I personally am not, but you know, you get what you get. All right, uh, let's see, uh, Faye says the same thing. Sorry, Carolyn, not yet camera ready, but fully alert. Thank you, Faye. <laughs> I hope I'm saying that right. Um, all right, very good. So once you're comfortable 
changing between speaker view and gallery view and getting into side by side but now right now you can't go to side by side view can anybody tell me why you can't go to side by side right now because yeah nobody's sharing their screen there's nothing to put on the side so side by side view is, is specifically designed for when somebody is sharing to let you have the the normal view to the side of the presentation so yeah i i actually had a very distinguished member of our community call me one day and say carolyn you showed me side by side view i want to use it i can't get there i said to this individual who is sharing with you nobody that's why you can't get to side by side view there's nothing to put on the side <laughs> so if you don't have anything being shared there's nothing to put on the side and let's talk more about sharing because we're actually going to practice sharing so those of you who aren't camera ready yet even if you're not camera ready you can practice sharing with us at the bottom of your screen you should see a little green box with the up arrow and it says share screen that's how we share the screen now a couple of cautions about share screen the more you have on your computer the more that's opened up on your computer the more choices you will have in share screen and the more potential there is for you to accidentally share something that you don't intend to share. Now, it's not that I think you have something on your computer that we shouldn't see, but there may be things on your computer that you would prefer we didn't see. And my example in my share screen, I'm gonna share my screen here, is that if I have my calendar open, I don't necessarily want everybody seeing my calendar. I may not want everybody seeing my grocery list or something else. You know, if I'm watching a video in the background, you, you know, I don't want you guys to know that I'm not watching, I'm watching my cartoons in the background. So I need to be careful what I share. When I first share, it's gonna come up with the screen, something like this. And what it'll do is depending on upon how many monitors you have, if you only have one monitor, then it's only gonna have one full screen that you can, that you can share. In my case, I have three. I have two big monitors and then I have my laptop. You saw that when I picked it up and turned it around, there were two different monitors that I could show you. And then there's the actual monitor on my laptop. So I have three screens, screen one, screen two, screen three. And when I get ready to share, I need to make sure that I'm sharing with you what I want you to see. So pick what you want to share, but want to share what you pick. <laughs> you know, you wanna accidentally share the wrong thing. It'll usually give you the option of sharing the whole screen or some program that you have opened on your computer. And a lot of times people don't realize all the things that they have open on their computer. They've got one thing that they're looking at, but there's other things behind it in the background. So for example, when I took this screenshot, I had a Zoom FAQ open, I had a, my inbox, you could see something from my, <laughs> from my email. I had a, <clears throat> a, a uh, something about Firefox going on over here, and then I had my sticky notes open. So I had the option of sharing any one of my screens or those things. The whiteboard is just that. It's just like having a whiteboard at the office, except that it's easier to write with a pen in your hand than it is with the mouse, at least for me. And then if you have your, your iPad or your iPhone connected, um, by Bluetooth or wireless, you can also share what's on those. So when we pick what we wanna share, we you take a look before you get started. You wanna look and see, okay, do I wanna share what's on the, the screen one, screen two, screen three? Make sure you know what it is that you're trying to share. And we're actually gonna practice that. So what I'll have you do is tell us what you think you're gonna show us and then show us and we'll tell you if that's what we see. And we'll actually give everybody a chance to practice that. One other thing I wanna show you before we go though, is when you see this screen come up, when it says select the window or application that you want to share, down here in the lower left corner is a little checkbox for share computer sound. If you're trying to share a video with people, you need to click that, otherwise all they're gonna do is be able to see the video, they won't be able to hear the sound. When you share your screen, you're only sharing the picture. You're not sharing the audio from your computer unless you click that box. So if you're trying to show a video, make sure you click, click that box. 
All righty. Let me stop sharing. And Cecilia, we're going to start with you because you're at the top of my screen. What is it you think you're going to show us? And then share your screen, and we'll tell you if that's what we see. You're on mute. So, oh, you got a picture of your daughter, you and your daughter, it looks like. Very good. Is that what you meant to show us? Okay, good. Very good. That's what we saw. So we're seeing a picture of you and your daughter. Beautiful. Very nice. Okay, if you'll stop sharing. And let's give Fatima a chance to share. If you tell us what you think you're going to share first and then what you're going to sh then show us what you get have. I have a uh, Excel spreadsheet. It's blank. Okay. Let's see if that's what we see. Very good. That's exactly what I see, a blank Excel, Excel spreadsheet. Good. All right, Perry. Even if you're not camera ready, we won't see you. We'll just see what's on your screen. No worries. Um, <laughs> I believe it is whatever tab is open for the internet. Okay, let's see if that's what we see. Share screen. There are really a lot of tabs open on this computer. There you go. <laughs> All right. San Francisco 49ers 2020 schedule. Very good. Very good. Thank you. We see it. Okay. All right. Faye, you want to give it a shot? Yes. All right. What are you going to share with us? Anything open on my... Yeah, on my Google page. On your that. Google page, all right. Very good, all right. Air, I got something with Airbnb. And yeah. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm, I'm noticing you have a bunch of tabs open. Yeah. So when you go in to share your screen, you're going to have a lot of options. If you close some of those tabs, you won't have as many options. It's awesome. easier to find what it is you think you're going to show. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just, that's just a hint, as a, especially if you're, if you're doing it during a meeting. Um, you want to make sure that you, you are sharing what you, what you planned to share. Yeah. Thank you. Very good. Very good. Now, this is just a basic overview of Zoom. And the reason that we do this is we want everybody to be comfortable with the Zoom, with the, with the virtual platform, because in this day and age, that's how we're meeting in our clubs, right? This is how most of our clubs are meeting. And um, when you are speaking or when you're presenting, if you can do some basic things to help out, that's what we want you to be comfortable with. Elizabeth and I were talking about helping people get started in Pathways, and we decided that before you could get started in Pathways, you really kind of needed to know what Pathways was. And to be able to know what Pathways was, we wanted to show you the website. But to be able to show you the website, we needed to make sure you knew how to get around in Zoom. So that's how this whole course started. And we may have people join us throughout the day, some people who have taken the Zoom course already or who are just know that they're familiar with it and they're comfortable with it, they may join us later on. Um, but this, this time is to get everybody comfortable with Zoom and the basic functions. So muting, unmuting, starting and stopping your video, putting on your screen, sharing what you think you're going to share. And um, some of you have already discovered the reactions button, so you can you can click on that and, and clap, or you can click on the reactions and give a thumbs up. Who can tell me another place where you might be able to give us a reaction? I mentioned it earlier. Participant list. In the participant list, yeah, you can raise your hand. And when you raise your hand in the participant list, it puts a little blue hand up there. If I don't see it, Elizabeth's watching, so she can take a look at that. She nudges me. Um, I could ask a question and you could respond to me from the persistence list. So right now, if you are, if you have had a cup of coffee, yes or no, tell us if you've had a cup of coffee. I can see that I've had a cup of coffee. Faye has not. Cecilia has. Perry says no. Oh, y'all are about to meet my, my office assistant. 
This is Babs, in case you see her pop up again. She likes to come join me in my meetings. Not to be alarmed. All right, so Fatima, we don't know. Oh, Fatima has had coffee. Very good. Very good. So we can ask questions that way and get a response. So the participants window and the chat window, we've mentioned briefly. I told you if you open them, they'll open over to the right hand side. At the top of each of those windows, you'll see a little drop down and it gives you the op uh, opportunity to pop it out to the side. How many screens do you have? Hold up fingers for how many screens you have. So I have three screens going right now. Elizabeth has three. Cecilia has one. Okay. Fatima, how many screens do you have going? Just one. Okay. The reason I ask that is when you pop up, you can, if you have more than one screen, you can actually take the chat and drag it over to the other screen and that gets it out of your way. You still then have more room for your gallery or your uh, speaker view, but you can still have the chat going to the side. If you have three screens going, well, you can do all sorts of things. You can also lose yourself. Um, <laughs> sometimes you get lost in the screens. And so just know that more screens is not always better. But once you get comfortable with it, it they're nice to have. They're nice to have. All right. So any questions that you have over the basic Zoom functions? If you have specific questions, I will do my best to answer those now. Hi, Carolyn, this is Perry. So in the participant screen, if I select yes, no, or raise hand, do I have to unselect that once the poll is gone? Yes, you will need to unselect it because like right now I can see you've raised your hand and uh, Fatima still has her, her yes on for having a cup of coffee. It's not gonna hurt anything to leave it on unless I ask another question and you don't want the answer to be the same. Um, but if you raise your hand and then I call on you, then it's easier if, to, if you put it down for me to not think you have another question. Thank you. Very good. You're, you're very welcome. Any other questions? Yes, yeah, Cecilia. Polling. Polling. So one of the things that you can do in certain sessions of you, Zoom is polling. Now the scope of this particular workshop doesn't cover presentations and polling and all that kind of thing. Because polling is only available in some of the, the more advanced versions of Zoom. The free version, I don't believe, has polling in it. But um, if, you, if you do have one where you pay a subscription fee, there is the way to go in. You can ask questions and people can then answer them. They don't have to have an advanced version to participate in the poll, but you have to have the advanced version to post the question. Okay. Yeah. Now, Zoom is an incredibly um, versatile and easy platform to use, but it is certainly not the only one out there. What I think you'll find, though, is no matter what platform you're using, they have similar features and functions, and they all work pretty much the same. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again and give you a couple of links for places you can go. If, there's, if you want to learn more about Zoom, here are a couple of links that I have. The Zoom video tutorials, this is actually put on by Zoom itself. I'm gonna copy this link and put it in the chat so that you can see it. Uh, and you can copy it down if you would like. Let me get that to everyone. So there, that's, that's the first link. And then the second one, this is actually put on by somebody other than Zoom, but that was 10, ticks, uh, 10 tips and tricks. Now, Everybody's Zoom meetings are a little bit different, you know, just like everybody's Toastmaster meetings are a little bit different. So there are no hard and fast rules. A lot of times people will, will remind you to keep your, your audio off if you're not the one speaking. That's an accepted practice. In some sessions though, like in, in my session when there's not so many people here, I don't mind if you keep your audio on, that way you can spontaneously answer. But if you're in a large meeting, you gotta be careful about that or if you start picking up background noise, you're gonna to wanna to be careful of having your, having your uh, audio on. Sorry, my dog is sitting here with me and she just started shaking. The, uh, the storm must be coming. I have my own little barometer on four legs here. All right, so that is some, some, a couple of places that by, by no means is the ex exhaustive list of how to go and learn about Zoom, but this is a, a place to at least get started. Any other questions about Zoom itself 
the, the, the just the basic functions of Zoom and what we're learning. Go ahead, Cecilia. Okay, I see uh, Elizabeth is recording. Yes. And then on our own screen, we also have the record button. So does that mean as you, once you have the permission from the presenter, you can record it? You could, re I think you can record it in addition to her recording it. She's recording it because we're going to make this available out on the district website. But yes, you have the option to, you know, you let people, and people can see that somebody is recording um, if you start to record. So you can always say, I, you know, hey, don't record this. But yeah, we are recording this so that we can put it out on the, on the district website. Can I try to hit the record button and see what okay. happens? Go ahead, see what happens. The request, please request recording permission from the meeting host. Elizabeth, can I? <laughs> <laughs> well, so, so she, since she's recording, it's not gonna let you record at the same time. So you can't record your own copy. Okay. If she gave you permission, then her recording would get stopped partway through and then the people who watch this later would be confused. <laughs> Actually, if they were watching the whole thing, they'd know exactly what's going on. But we'd end up having to splice the videos together. So that we're, we're not going to make more work for Elizabeth. She's already got plenty to do. But that's good to know that only one person can record it. Only one person can record at a time. Yeah. I thought maybe you could record your own copy, but it doesn't look like you can. Mm -hmm. That may be a feature that's available in, in other. I've seen that where people have recorded the sessions or piece, pieces of them. And I don't know that anybody else tried at the same time. So. Every, every time I do this, I learn something new as well. Every time I do it. Any other questions? If not, what I'm gonna do is give you guys a little bit of a break and we'll come back at 8.30, which gives us about 20 minutes. You can go to the bathroom and get that second cup of coffee. If you're not quite camera ready, you can get camera ready so that we get to see your smiling face. Um, but we will resume at 8.30. <laughs> resume. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I just cracked myself up. We will resume at 830 with our toddler session where we're just going to start toddling around and seeing the different websites. I'll, I'll go ahead and stay on in case people have questions, but if you if you need to take a break, this is your chance. Thank you, Carolyn. Can I ask, going back to your schedule, is this the session where we discuss backgrounds or is that later on in the progression? The, well, I didn't really go into back, you talking about Zoom backgrounds? Yes, ma'am. So the, all I presented from Zoom or all I'm planning to present from Zoom is the basics of getting around in Zoom so that as we go forward, the actual goal of this course is to get everybody signed up for Pathways. So I'm just kind of showing everybody the features they need to be able to follow along in the next few sessions. You can certainly do backgrounds. There are ways to do them. Um, and since we're, we're on a break, I don't mind going over that. The, um, when you go down to your video button, if you go down to the lower left hand corner next to where it says where you see your video camera, it'll give you the option to put up a background. Now, depending upon your computer, my work computer, for example, the one I'm using now, I would have to have a green screen behind me to have a background. If I try to put a background on right now, I end up as, uh, I think it was Cecilia said, I look like an alien because the, the, everything's kind of weird. In fact, my computer, when I try to do it, it comes up and it says, your computer is not compatible with backgrounds. My newer computer that I have that's personal, I don't even need a green screen. So that's gonna depend on the particular equipment that you have. But it's in Zoom, it's very simple. You go down to the video, uh, the, the video camera button, click on it. It'll give you an opportunity to add a background. Let me stop sharing. So we can see, you get a uh, video bracket, choose virtual background. And if you don't have, if it, there's no pictures there, you just click the little plus sign and it'll let you go get an image either from, uh, from one of your files. So I have files and I can go, go pick one out and try to put it up. But if I do, I'm, I'm gonna disappear in it. It's, it's just, this particular camera doesn't, doesn't work well for that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Like I said, on my new, my, my computer that I have, that's my personal computer, I don't even need a green screen. It just, it does the backgrounds really well. 
And interesting. Go ahead. Just out of curiosity, during the meetings when the timer has the screen in the back with the different colors, the green, the yellow, the red, that's mm -hmm. because they have a green screen and they're able to do that? Um, well, it's going to depend on their computer. Like if I do it, if I tried to do it from here for, with this computer, I'd need a green screen. If I do it with my personal computer, I don't need a green screen. It depends on the video capabilities of your particular computer. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for sharing. I appreciate it. No, no worries. Cecilia, did you have a question? No, I just thought you just popped up there. Somebody's giving us some feedback, so somebody's mic is open. If you have a headset on and you try to use the microphone on your computer, you'll get that feedback. That's what that means. Carolyn, I have a question. Okay. When you can hear someone speaking with an echo, what is that from? It typically means that they've got m multiple sources going at the same time. So like if somebody is doing one thing on their computer and say calling in on their cell phone, they may, may not know how to control the volume and everything on their computer. So they've got the, the call on their cell phone. But if there's a microphone on the computer, it's going to pick up feedback. So you have to keep those separated. Um, one of the platforms, it's called Jitsi. We, we use, some friends and I use it to get together once a month. That's just the platform we picked, so we all get on it. it there's two of us at the house that use it. We have to go into separate rooms, because even if we're on separate computers, if we're in the same room, it picks up the interference from the other microphone and <laughs> starts squawking. So um, if you get that squawking, try to get away from get your computer away from cell phones, away from iPads, things like that. You really only want to have one uh, sound input device going at a time. Somebody asked, how do you connect a second screen or a third? And Faye, that depends again on your computer. So with my laptop, I have uh, USB ports that I can plug things into. And um, one of the, I also have a um, DVI port on it so I could I can actually plug my laptop into say the TV at my house and and see what I see on my laptop screen on the big screen in the TV um, how many screens you can have depends on the equipment that you're using when I am using this laptop that I have from work and it's it's a I mean it's just a it's not anything super special it's a i5 uh, Dell computer, not a, not a big powerful computer, but there's a docking station that I can hook up to it. And that docking station allows me to have more monitors. So there's the monitor on the laptop. And then by plugging in the docking station, I can add additional monitors to my laptop. Um, the laptop by itself will only support itself in one other screen. But when I put the docking station in, it lets me have um, multiple additional screens on the on the on the uh, docking station. And some of that has to do with the the, the video card that you're using, um, the processors. If you put too many things on your computer at the same time, it it won't do any of them well. <laughs> it's a, it's a little like a person multitasking if it's trying to keep up with too many things. Um, it it won't it won't do it won't do any of them well, but uh, that's that's how I have it. Yeah, my my hookup is so you've got my laptop and then you can see I've got two big 32 inch monitors and there's my little docking station that hooks them all together. So um, there you go. There's my secret for three monitors. I will tell you that the the beauty of three monitors is I can have a lot of things going at the same time. Um, the downside of it is if you only have one, if you're only using your laptop and everything is on your laptop screen, then you're focused at your laptop screen. And it looks like you're actually looking at the people who are watching you. When you get fancy and you have multiple screens going, 
you'll notice that a lot of the times it looks like I'm looking up into the left or up into the right, and that's because my laptop is down on the on the table and these other two monitors loom above it. So as I'm looking up there to see you guys, you see me looking up and off to the side instead of at the screen where the camera is. So when you're giving a presentation, that's something to be aware of. Um, my glasses hide it some, but that's why I was taking them off. You can see right now. You can, you can see me looking up into the up into the to the right because that's where you, your your pictures are. If I look over here, I can see my presentation. I actually have to focus and look directly at the laptop monitor to um, remind to, to for you to for to to appear to you that I'm looking directly at you. So, the uh, challenges and the benefits of of multiple screens. Fran, you've joined us. Can you find your volume button, Fran? I'm there you go. I'm check. I'm check. There you are. I see you. I mean, well, I hear you. I don't see you yet, but I can hear you. Uh, okay, now you want to be sure you check the, the camera. Don't turn the camera off, but turn the camera back on. Where's the cam? Okay, so in the I lower left-hand corner, you should see a video camera. You got Charla on the phone with you. I can hear her. Yes. <laughs> I, Move I the cursor. Okay. So, yeah, and it'll disappear, but it'll show back up. So right next to where you put the audio, there's also going to be one that shows the camera. So you want to click on that. Do you all see that right now? Yes. Okay, so click on it. And you want to make sure that it's yeah. that so I once you click on then that's when Carolyn will be able to see you. Yeah. I can see you, Fran. Oh good. Yay. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. You caught right. us we're taking a short little break. We started at 7.30, and um, we're going to pick back up at 8.30. I'm just asking, answering questions now. But I see that Sharla has got you up and running. Sort of. Sort of. That's okay. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for Ooh. joining us. Yeah. And Sharla, thank you for helping her get set up. Are we good, Fran? Thank you, Sharla. Thank you, Sharla. Get off. Okay. Bye. So Fran, I'm going to I'm going to give you just a real brief review of some of the things we've talked about. Can okay. you see my screen? Can you see my presentation? Uh yes. Okay. Um on the bottom of your screen there will be a bar looks much like this has a microphone, a video camera. That's what uh Charlotte was showing you earlier. Okay. And if there's a red line through the microphone, that means we can't hear you. If okay. your microphone looks like this, then we can hear you. So right now your microphone is just white. It doesn't have the red line through it, so we can hear you. Okay. The video camera works the same way. This is the video camera. And if I click on it and say stop video, it'll put a red line through it and then we can't see you. Okay. Okay. The other one that we're going to use quite a bit today is the share screen. You should see one that has a green, whoops, I just accidentally changed my own slide. It'll have a green arrow and it says share screen. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. Oh. That's how you share your screen with us. And in just a minute, I'm going to give you a chance to practice that, okay? Because today, one of the things we're going to do, it's called a scavenger hunt. We're going to get out to the website. I'll give you guys something to find, and your job will be to find it and then share it on your screen so we know you found it. <laughs> That'll give you some practice sharing, okay? Yes. Um, the other thing that we covered earlier was that there's different ways to see things on your screen. There's active speaker. That's where, right, mm -hmm. is this the way you see it now where there's one big picture and then little pictures across the top? Or do you see the gallery view where you see a lot of little pictures? I see uh, a t a one person and besides that, a lot little ones. Okay. There you go. So um, are you, yours are kind of off to the side. How many screens do you have, Fran? Do you have one monitor or two? One. 
one. Okay. Very good. Okay. So um, the side by side view lets you see the presentation and either the speaker or the presentation and the whole gallery. You have a choice of which way you want to see it. And you can actually change the way you see things. If you go up to the right hand side, you'll see a little thing that looks like a tic-tac-toe board. If you only have one picture there, you'll see a tic-tac-toe board. You can click on that and then you'll see everybody. Or if you see everybody, you go up and you click on the little one that says speaker view and it'll narrow it down. So you can choose whether you see a whole group of people or whether you just see the main person speaking at any given time. Okay. You want to practice that? Uh, it's not doing anything. Let me take off the, the sharing that I'm doing and it might be easier for you to see. Ah, okay. Okay. Now is that easier? Yeah. Yeah. So do you have one? Do you have the big picture and little pictures or do you have lots of little pictures? I have you and then little pictures across the top. Okay. That's the speaker view. Mm -hmm. That's the speaker view. Now if you want to see gallery view, move your mouse up to the right hand side of the screen and you will see a little ah. tic-tac-toe board looking thing. You can click on that and it'll take you to where you see everybody okay. in little pictures okay you don't see everybody in little pictures click That's on that gallery right. view. Doug said i'm not right wait a minute it's just you and her and two pictures underneath tell her what you have fran i have four pictures just four instead of all of them okay no, so, oh, now I have two of me. Yeah. So I'm what I'm doing is on my camera, I'm showing you what I see on my screen. This is gallery view with you on it. Okay. And then when I go up to the upper right hand corner and I click on that little tic tac toe board up there in the right hand corner, it changes it so that now what I see is a set of pictures. Okay. So this is gallery view. Okay. And that's speaker view. Okay. Right now I'm on speaker view and I'm featuring Cecilia. Mm hmm. And I can pick different people. If I go up to the top, to those pictures at the top, I get these little blue boxes that have three little dots in them. Uh, and I can click on one of those and say pin. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I don't have a things across the top. Way over no. on the left, there are some. Other people? No, it's a recording. Okay. So are you, do you see a picture, one big picture and lots of little pictures, or do you see all pictures no, about the I same size? No, I see size? two pictures of me and then Elizabeth and Cecilia. Okay, so you're in gallery view right now. Okay. You're in gallery view. And on the side where you see that it says it's recording, Go to the opposite side and put your mouse up there and you'll see the way to change ah, the view. Okay. So just practice going back and forth between them. Yeah. Speaker view. Oh, goodness. And gallery view. There you go. What are you seeing now? Um, 
it just flipped the tape back on. Hang on. Uh, okay, now I see you and then across the top. Okay, so you're in speaker view. Right. Yeah. Go to one of those pictures across the top, Fran. Like, pick, yeah, pick, click the picture, uh, look at the picture of Cecilia. Click on it? Um, if you put your if you put your mouse on it, do you see a little blue box come up? Yeah, yes. Click on that little blue box. Hide non-view participants. Yeah, that'll let you take take them off, so you don't see people who are not if they're not showing their video, you can take them off, or you can pin them. She's she's not on right now, so she's uh, doesn't give us the pin option, I guess. I'm here. <laughs> Oh, there she is. There she is. There now she we was. should be able to, now we should be able to pin her video. There we go. So for those of you who were here before, Fran is a member of one of the clubs that I'm in and I'm excited to see her. So I was just taking a little time to get her caught up while we were on our break. Because she's so sweet. Well. <laughs> Don't tell all my secrets. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. L. Perry. Who's that? Um, yeah, goes by Perry. So that's somebody that's that's joined our session. Then Fatima is here. Um, Cecilia, we can almost see your screen, but you're like half and half. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, it needs to move to your left if you want us to be able to really see it. My left. <laughs> oh, your other left. My other left? <laughs> <laughs> That's my there right. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you're mirrored in there. So that's a beautiful picture behind you, though. Looks like stained glass. Mm, that is the glass museum in Tacoma. Ah, very nice. All right. Well, it is now 830. So we will start our second session. Oh. And the second part of our of our uh, class today is on the International and the District 56 website. I call it exploring the websites. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take you on a tour of the District 56 and the International website. Pay attention to what we see where, because at the end of this, I'm going to give you all things to go look for. And you'll have a chance to go find them. And if you find them and share your screen to show us that you found them. But for to start off, I will lead the tour of the websites. So bear with me for just a second while I change my screen sharing. I am going to, all right. I'm going to share screen one. And you should be seeing a picture of the international website. Did everybody see Toastmasters International and the big maroon bar across the top of their screen? Thank you, Faye, got that? I can see that you see it. All right. This is the international website. If you're not sure how to get to the international website, you can click Google, type in Toastmasters, and one of the first links that will come up is the Toastmasters international website. Um, you can also type in Toastmasters.org, like I have here, Toastmasters.org. That will take you to the international website. Can anybody tell me how to get to the District 56 website? Call Charla. Card call Charla. <laughs> <laughs> that will work, but not everybody has a Charla. So to get to the, the District 56 website, the new, uh, the address for the website is toastmastershouston.com. So T-O-A-S-T-M-A-S-T-E-R. S 
H-O-U-S-T-O-N dot com. It is dot com, not dot org. All right. So this is the international website, and this is where we're going to spend the majority of our time. But since District 56 has launched a new website, I do want to take just a minute and show you a couple of things about the District 56 website. This is our new District 56 website. It's very interactive. It's way cool. There's a couple of features that I want to make sure everybody knows about. I had to learn them the hard way, Fran. I don't want you to have to learn them the hard way. Okay? Thank you. <laughs> you are welcome. On the, on the District 56 website, to get to the menu, it's up here in the upper right-hand corner. You actually have to click on it to go get the menu. On a lot of websites, the menu's automatically up there. Here, you'll see it says menu. And when I click on menu, then it gives me the menu down the side of my screen not across the top like a lot of websites it's over here on the side here's the next cool thing on a lot of websites you get your menu you click on something to make it happen here if i hover above about us it brings up other things see how it says what is toastmasters the benefits of joining it brings the menu to me it's over to the left now, if I scroll, uh, I'm not even going to scroll, I'm just going to move my mouse down to find a club, nothing pops up. See how the screen to the left is blank still? But if I go on news, it tells me district news, club news, member spot. It's giving me my second level menu over to the left. So if I want to, to, to see club news, the first thing I do is I go to the main menu. I hover, not click, but I hover over news. And then I'm going to move over and now I can click on district news or club news or member spotlights. If you are a clicker and clickers, you know who you are. You're the ones that you're clicking everything, waiting for them to catch up. You're going to have to slow down just a second on the new 56 website because if you click on news, nothing happens. If you hover, it brings up the menu. But to actually get to the others, you move over and click on those. So it's slightly different than some of the other websites that you may have gone to. That's my big trick for District 56. The next thing is, so for example, if, if we were going to sign up for another class, we'd want to go to events or education. We could go see the, the district officer training, pathways, whatever. But if we want to see the events on the calendar, when we click on calendar, it will come up. See, it says calendar, and I was going, well, it says calendar, but where's the calendar? I actually need to scroll down a little bit to see the calendar. When I'm looking at the calendar, I have the numbers of the days. Today's the 25th. That one dot and that little one up there means there's one event today and you're in it. Lucky you. Woohoo! Um, if you go to the 27th, there's an event. There's one on the 28th, one on the 29th, so you can see them. If you scroll down a little more, you can actually see all the events listed for the, for the month below the calendar and they're listed in order. As the events take place, they'll line them out or take them off. And on this one, you can actually see it's blinking, that little red blinking that tells people it's going on right now. Oh. So that's how you would get to the calendar if you wanted to sign up for something else or if you wanted to know what else was going on. So if we look at what's coming up, there's a grateful leadership coming up on the 30th. There's another one of these sessions, uh, the, third, the third session of this on win next Wednesday, free toast toast. So all the sessions that are out, that are available are out there. To change the month, Fran, when I yeah. scroll up and I look where it says July, there's a little arrow that takes me back and forward. So I wanna go ahead to August. And now I can see when there are things in August. There's two things on the 1st of August. 
If I scroll down, it'll show me all of those. And it'll show them in order that they're happening. So that's just a little bit about the District 56 website to get you started. The worst thing your computer can possibly do to you is beep uh. at you. That's all it can do. And if it beeps at you, just beep back <laughs> and keep going. Don't let it scare you. Don't let it scare you. All right. I'm going to go over to the Toastmasters International website now. I actually have these saved as favorites on my computer. And if you want to know how to make, do saving favorites, Fran, we can set up a time and I can help you with favorites. Okay. Because I'll need to know what browser you're using and stuff like that. But um, on the Toastmasters International website, that's the one that has the big maroon bar here. You should see that. One of the things that's, that's on here, the Toastmasters logo. Any page where you see the Toastmasters logo, if you click on that logo, it will bring you back to this home page on the website. That's true on a lot of organizational websites. If you click on their logo, it'll take you back to their home page. And that is true on this one. There are a lot, there's a lot of information out here and you don't have to be a member to see it all. Right now, I am not logged in. You can tell I'm not logged in because there's a little login button up here that says log in. We're going to do that in a few minutes, but first I want you to see all the things you can see on this website without ever even logging in. So this is information that is available to anyone. If you've got people who are visiting your club or people you think might be interested in Toastmasters, this is all things they can come out and see even without being a member. One, is about Toastmasters. Now, this is where, remember on the District 56 website, if I just hovered above out, it brought up the, you know, if I hovered and then it brought up the menu. On this one, you actually need to click on it. You click on about, and then it gives you your menu. So you can find out all about Toastmasters, the Smedley Fund, our mission, history, the world headquarters, international presidents. You can find out about any of these categories by clicking on about and then clicking on the next level. So I want to see the world headquarters. I go to about, and then I click on world headquarters. And look at that, mm. world headquarters. It tells me that it's in Inglewood, Colorado, and I can actually even see a picture of it. Now, if I want to go back to the home page, there's a couple of ways I can get there. I can go to this word that says home and click on that, or Remember I said you could click on the logo. If you click on the logo, it'll take you back to the home page. One of the things people tell me is I can't find pathways. If you can't find pathways on the international website, try opening your eyes. Because the minute you look onto the website, one of the first things you see is pathways. It's right there next to about. If you click on pathways, it's going to tell you learn more, smart, uh, the start page, frequently asked questions, go to a path, go to base camp, updates, navigate, all sorts of information about pathways. Now we're going to dive into that more in our next session, but let's remember that that's one way we can get to pathways. Another way I can get to pathways, click on education and look what's right there. Pathways, again. Pathways. Think they're trying to tell us something? <laughs> they make it very easy for us to find pathways. The next, so we've seen about, we've seen pathways, we've seen education. This is called membership, a Toastmasters journey, how to join, welcome to new members, sponsor a club. These are all topics that we can click on and get more information. So for example, club meeting roles. If I'm new or I'm visiting a club and I want to know what are all these things that they're doing in the meeting, I can go click on club meeting roles and it will tell me about the roles, the awe counter, the Toastmaster, the table topic speaker. Not only will it tell me about them, but if I'm going to be the grammarian and I click on grammarian, it will tell me about it and it will give me a script and the log. If I click here, It'll let me download, gives me a chance to download the form to fill out that would help me as a grammarian. 
Now your club may have its own forms that it uses, or you may just use a scrap piece of paper. That's fine. But if you want it, they actually give you a form that you can follow, um, you can fill out and you can follow along with. Yeah. To go back, if I want to go all the way home, or if I just want to go back to resources, I can click on the logo if I want to go back to home. And this menu bar is still up here, so I could do something from there. I can also use the back arrows, or I can, you know, navigate other ways. But I'm just going to show you some of the ways you can do it. You don't have to be an expert on all of them. Just know that if you get lost, you can always click on that Toastmasters logo and it will take you back to the home page where you can start over again. It's kind of like a get out of jail free card. It automatically takes you back to the home page. Um, and I hope there's not an awe counter on this particular meeting because I know I am racking up some points here. Leadership Central, this is where you can go and find information that will help you in your role as a club officer if you're a club officer. Club officers have access to what they call Club Central. If you're a district officer or district leader, then you'll have access to District Central. But there's also things that everybody has access to, like the brand portal. If I wanted to find a copy of this Toastmasters logo that I could um, use on a background like Elizabeth has behind her on her background. Brand portal is where I can go and find all the rules and regulations for using the Toastmaster brand. And if in your club you're going to use the logo, I highly recommend that you go to Brand Central and learn the proper way to do it. Um, if you don't, then and you use it wrong, then somebody comes and talks to you and says, that's not how you're supposed to use the logo. And just avoid that by going to Brand Central and getting the scoop ahead of time on how you're supposed to use it. Resources gives us a lot of resources, the resource library, public speaking tips, podcast. Again, it can get you back to Brand Portal, tells you about speech contest, COVID-19 updates. This is going to be pertinent to uh, Toastmasters, not the world news, but COVID-19 is part of everybody's world, inc including Toastmasters right now. A video library. This library, Fran, if you click on this video library, it mm -hmm. actually gives you videos that you can watch that will show you how to do different things. Oh. So, for example, how to use visual aids. There's a video on how to do that. You can also find people's testimonials and different things. There's 57 different videos that you can watch just from the Toastmasters website. Now, if I click on one of these, I can show you the video, but you can't hear it. Does oh. anybody remember what I said you have to do if you're going to share your screen and you want people to be able to hear the video? Click on the, Check the box. That's right. When you go to share your screen, there's a, there's a box that you have to click on to allow people to hear the video on your computer. Otherwise, all they do is see the picture. So um, I'll remind you of that and again in just a second, Fran. I'll show you where you see that. Okay. So here is uh, videos that you can watch. Events, much like the District 56 site, that's where you can go see what's going on in the international. So they're webinars. That means they actually have, like what we're doing now is considered a webinar. They have webinars on different things to do with Toastmasters. So there's a webinar on July 29th about know your audience. There's a webinar on July 30th on humor and body language and one on the 31st about cultural awareness in business. So much like we're doing video sessions to help you learn, Toastmasters International is putting some of these together and putting them out there for people to, to join and learn as well. Now Greenwich Mean Time, that is not familiar to most of us in the United States. That's about six hours ahead of us. So. If it's at 1300, that's military time. That means one o'clock their time. That's gonna be early in the morning for us here. <laughs> that's
that's what that means early in the morning um let's say one o'clock p.m their time back it up six hours carolyn you can do this 12 11 10 9 8 7 about seven o'clock so 30 minutes earlier than we started this morning um, to catch that video but that's Grin greenwich mean time that's what that is the same time as it is in london right now other things that are available through the Toastmasters website. I might have skipped one. Let's see, resources. What can I see there? Resource library, public speaking tips, podcast. No, we did that one. Okay. Magazine. That Toastmasters magazine that comes in the mail every month for some of us is also available online. Okay. All of a sudden, my screen has frozen. Why is that? I can't get off of this. There's your pants. Magazine. The magazine button does not appear to be working right now because the others are. Is anybody else having, has anybody else got the website open? Is anybody else having trouble or is it just me and my screen? I'll, I'll try it, Caroline. Let me see. Okay, I have it up. So you can see the magazine? Let me look. <laughs> They've been doing different things on the website. So it may not be, it may not be out there, but they may be getting ready to put out the August edition or something like that. No, the magazine is not coming up. Okay, just wanted to make sure it wasn't just, just me. It's not, um, it's me too. <laughs> oh, now it, now it just came up for me. So, I don't know what's going on out there. I don't know if it's just, but the, the same magazine that you get in the mail, you can see online. Now, a cool thing about the magazine online is they can include videos. So as you're going through the magazine, you might find a video to watch. Well, when they mail it to you in the mail, you can't watch the video in the magazine. You'd have to type the web address in and go get on YouTube or wherever to see it. But you can do that right from the magazine on the online version. So that there, there's good there's there's pros and cons to both the the video the the um, virtual magazine and the paper copy. I like getting the paper copy because then we use them in one of my clubs in our welcome kits. We give those to people when they come as a guest. But I like going out to the online one because of the links that are in it. I don't have to then type them in or go find them. They're right there. I can just click on them and go right to what it's talking about. Of course, shower. Toastmasters has a store. Okay. You can shop. You can shop for all kinds of things in Toastmasters. You can shop for educational materials. You can shop for things to help with your meeting or contest or how to recognize people if you want to give out certificates or trophies or ribbons. All of the items in the Toastmasters store that are branded are branded properly. If you try to make your own awards, you need to be very, very careful because there are rules about what you can and cannot do with the Toastmasters brand. So be, be very careful, go out and read that brand portal um, and know what, know what you're doing. For marketing, if you are gonna put together things, the brochures and flyers and information that they have here out on the store, very reasonably priced. For example, this is a brochure it's a three, it's a color brochure, threefold, 20 cents a brochure. If you bought one and took it to Kinko's and tried to copy it, you couldn't copy it for 20 cents. It cost you 20 cents a side just to copy it and then you'd have to fold it yourself. So it's actually cheaper to buy them from Toastmasters than it is to buy one and try to make your own copies. Some of the things they have, they will also give you a downloadable version so that you can print them, uh, particularly the flyers and some of the manuals and handbooks. So um, good stuff out there on there. Gifts in case you want to buy me a Christmas present. I'm uh, modeling for, for you right now one of the items in the Toastmaster store. It is the um, Lady Short Sleeve Oxford shirt. I'm wearing that right. See, my little Toastmasters brand on my arm. It's right here. But if you want to know what I'm looking for for Christmas, I really like the uh, where leaders are made. Whoops. The where leaders are made t-shirt and um 
me get back there. Gifts. Yeah, I told you I was a clicker. I have to slow down. Gifts. Women's apparel. I like to wear leaders are made t-shirt. And I think that the classic polo is also very nice if you're looking for Christmas ideas. So you can do a lot of shopping out there on the store. These are all things that anybody can see at any time. You do not have to be a Toastmaster. If you are a Toastmaster, there are additional things that you can do. Um, you can actually get signed up for pathways and so on. Um, to see your personal profile, you will need to log in. Now there's two pieces of information that you need to log in to the Toastmaster website. The first is your email address. The second is your password. If you don't have your password, but you have your email, e email address, never fear, there's a way to say you forgot your password and they can mail you a way to get back in. If you have forgotten your email address though, you're gonna need to call Toastmasters International and get them to help you get your, your email reset up. And there's a thing up here at the top, it says contact us. If you click on contact us, it gives you all sorts of contacts for Toastmasters. Oh. There's mem the membership uh, can help you with resetting your password and getting your email set up. I know this because they helped me. But if you really want to call them, if you scroll all the way to the bottom of this, they actually give you their phone number and they tell you that from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Mountain Time, Monday through Friday, that's when they're open. And they also have a fax number if you just want to fax them. But um, if you need help getting your, your email reset, these are the people to call. Okay, these are the people to call. So logging in, how do I log in? At the very top of the Toastmasters page, there's a little shopping cart, and then there's a one that says log on or log in. If you click on log in, it brings up a place for you to put in your email and your password. Now, I save my password for, t for some sites on my computer. That's a personal preference. <clears throat> some people don't like to do that, that's fine. Um, but uh, I have a, a password saver that I use. So 87 Aggie at Gmail, that's my member ID. That's the email that Toastmasters knows for me. I put in my password and I click log in and it will take me in. If I had forgotten my password, but I remembered my email, I can click on forgot password and it will send me an email and help me get my password reset. When I log in, when I click the log in button, suddenly it knows. It says, welcome, Carolyn. Now, if you log in, it shouldn't say, welcome, Carolyn. When you log in, it should say, welcome, Cecilia, or welcome, Faye, or welcome, Fatima. If you click up there where it says, welcome and your name, it will take you to your profile. And in your profile, you can find out all sorts of information about yourself. So for example, <clears throat> excuse me, I can find out that I have been a member since March 1st of 2015. Oh. I know if I don't know my member number, it's right here for me. So once you log in, Fran, you'll be able to see that kind of information about you. Right now it tells me I'm enrolled in two paths and I can go see my transcripts. Look at this, I can get to base camp. I can, get, I can go choose a path. Again, pathways very prominently displayed, displayed here in my profile. So now we've seen three different ways so far that we can get to pathways. We can click on the pathways button, we can click on the education button, or we can go into our profile. All three of them will give us ways to get to base camp and to pathways. Some of the cool things that it'll show you in your profile, 
aside from your current information, this is what Toastmasters has on file for you. So if any of this has changed, you'll want to let them know. You can edit your contact information. It'll let you know your membership history. If you're not sure when you first joined, you can look and see which clubs you've been a member of when you joined them and when you stopped going. So I am not a member of all six of these right now. I'm currently only a member of two, but in the past I have been part of four other clubs. Hmm. To go back, I can just click on profile and it'll take me back to my profile. Or I could use my back arrow, either one will work. Education awards, what education awards do I have? It'll take me in and it'll show me the awards that I have. So for example, I know that I just recently turned an award in to one of my clubs and I don't see it on here. So if I did, if I turned it in and I don't see it on here, I might want to get with my VP of education and say, hey, I turned in my level one for whatever it was. I don't remember now. Um, this was innovative planning. That one's on here. So it must have been I don't remember now what my other path is, but it's not here. So I need to talk to my, um, my VPE. Now, since I can't remember what my other path is, let's go find out. I'm enrolled in two paths. What are they? Ah, innovative planning and leadership development. So, I saw my innovative planning one on there, but I didn't see my leadership development. So I need to go talk to my, my VPE in that club and see if there's something, something missing. Here it shows I'm actually enrolled in three paths and that's true. I think this one was tied to a third club that I'm not a member of, but I can get it changed. So I can see all of my paths. We're actually gonna go more into what we do in pathways and how they look in our next session that's going to start at 9 30. so for right now i'm just going to go back to the toastmasters main page now one of the things that i have learned is once you go out and start getting into pathways getting back to toastmasters not always as easy as you might think this logo takes you back to the pathways homepage, not the toastmasters but if you look down here below welcome to base camp it'll say return to my Toastmasters profile, that will get me back to the Toastmasters main page. When you get ready to sign up for your DTM, you have to give them information on what offices you've held and what you've done. All of that is recorded out here for you under offices held. We can go in and see what offices have been held and when, when I was VPE, I was an area director back in 2017. I'm an area director now. So you can see what officer roles you have held by looking at your profile. Another thing that you can do in your profile is talk about is um, opt in and opt out of things for uh, privacy. So for example, if right now I've opted in, it says the yes is selected for email and for mail. Um, if I don't want something, if I don't want them to talk, like I said, I don't want to receive calls from Toastmasters, I click no, and that's how I opt out. So this is for your privacy settings. If you do it one way, you can always change it. So if you have opted out of emails and then you realize, oh, wait a minute, I'm not getting some of the information I need, you can opt back in. That's you can do that anytime. Right now, it's fine for them to put my name on public reports, but if I don't, I can opt out of it. That's all totally acceptable. If I change anything, then I will want to save that change. Proxy information. I'm bringing this up because we're going to be having the international conference soon and it'll be important if you are the president or the secretary of your club for you to give your proxy to somebody who is actually going to be attending the international convention. It's virtual this year, but it is going to still be important for people to be able to do proxies. Um, 
I don't have proxy because I'm the sergeant at arms, but if I were the club president or the or secretary, I would have the option of assigning my proxy to somebody. So every year when you hear them start talking about proxies, this is how you can do it. If you are the set president or secretary and you need to give your proxy, go in, click on your profile, and that's where you can, you can pass off your proxy right there. So a lot of information about you here and available in the profile. All right, we're gonna see who's still awake and who's been paying attention. I am going to stop sharing. And here is a challenge. I would like to see who can find the names of the 11 paths in Pathways. See if you can find on the Toastmasters website the names of the 11 paths. If you find them, share your screen and show us what you found. <laughs> oh, now, if I was okay. looking for the 11 paths and pathways, where would I go to try to find that? Uh, ah, Faye found them. Very good, Faye. So Faye went in and she went to, let's see if I can figure out where you are. Are you under pathways? Yep, she went to Pathways Learning Experience and scrolled down on the page. And sure enough, there are the 11 different paths for Pathways. Very nice. Good job, Faye. All right, new challenge. Can you find the location and picture of the world headquarters? Who can find the location and picture of Toastmasters International World Headquarters? If you, when you find it, share your screen. Let's see who's gonna find it first. Oh, boy, you guys are gonna have to be fast to beat Faye. That's right. There it is, Inglewood, Colorado. Very good. All right, Faye. Let's 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 see if somebody else can find one and share their screen. I'm gonna gonna hold you back now. I'm looking for an explanation of club meeting roles. An explanation of the club meeting roles. We looked at this earlier. Let's see if you can find it before. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give everybody else a head start and then we'll let Faye go. Celia, are you still with us? Fatima, are you still with us? Explanation of the club meeting roles. Might look under membership. If you go to the Toastmasters International website and look under membership. Brian, are you on the Toastmasters website? I see your face and some across the top. But up the top it just says zoom meeting okay so you only have oh. one screen so you would have to bring your browser up on top there's the club meeting roles very good cecilia nice job yeah if you scroll down it actually gives you all of them so fran yeah in order for you to see your browser right now you'll need to pull it up do you um let me, think of the best way to tell you this. So you've got Zoom meeting and that's what's on your screen. The top, yes. Yeah. Um, at the bottom of your screen, do you have a bunch of little pictures of like... Um, a teddy bear and a world. Yeah, all kinds of stuff like that. Yes. So can you go to the internet there? 
Can you go to your, your browser down there? Talk to Cortana. No, you don't want to talk to Cortana. Um, Microsoft. Yeah, do you have Internet Explorer or? Yes. Yeah, click on Internet Explorer. I forgot which one it is. Uh, um, what's the icon look like for that? Um, has an E. Like a big blue E. I don't have a big blue E. Okay. Do you have one and that something has like that three colors? It's like a circle with three colors? No. Oh, maybe. Looks like a, no. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, that wasn't it. Zoom Cloud Internet browsers. There we go. All right, I'm going to share my screen for a second, Fran. Okay. So these are all pictures of internet browsers. There's the. That's not what. Do you have one that looks like a compass, or one that looks like this with the three colors? Oh wait, now you're back. Okay. Uh. Down at the bottom of your screen. Uh, down bottom of my screen. Okay. Now. Very bottom, very bottom. Okay. I have. Okay. nothing or any of these pictures look familiar i don't see your pictures oh <laughs> well let me share my screen that will help oh. <laughs> they're trying to trick me and it's oh, working yeah, oh, well, there yeah. we go <laughs> so but, do you have anything that looks like any of these like this the three I, three colors or the big e uh, the compass. I have a big E. You have a big E? No way. A big blue E? <coughs> Just a minute. Or it might might look like this E. Have a. And I don't think I'm on the right. Okay. Well, Fran, we're probably going to need to spend some time <laughs> just showing you how to find your internet browser. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we can do that. We'll do that here in just a couple of minutes. Okay. Let yeah. me get everybody else started on something and then I'm going to, we'll see if we can help you get to your internet. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's see. I still have a couple other things to see if people can find on there. I want to join a club in Bismarck, North Dakota. So Cecilia, Fatima, Faye, Elizabeth, you can play. Joe, you can play. Fran, if you can get to your browser, you can play, but we're going to have to work on getting you to your browser. <laughs> um, show me how I would find a club in Bismarck, North Dakota. Fran, I want you to click on your green screen, the, the little button that says share screen. Okay. You uh, cannot, very good, Fatima. It says you cannot start screen share while other participants sharing. That's right. Fatima, Fatima showed us how to get to Bismarck, ah, North okay. Dakota. So she, she's going to stop sharing her screen. Good job, Fatima. All right, Fran. Share your screen. Okay. Comes up with a white box ah, and gives yes. you options. Okay. Yes. Share the screen. It's got a white box with your yeah, It's got a white box that says different things that you can share. 
You yeah. want to share screen. Hey. It's usually the far left hand side. Very oh, first where your where your picture is. Yep. Click on you. Uh yeah. And then click share. Share, share. Share. In the share. lower left hand corner of the white box. Left. Mine's on the right. Oh, okay. Ah. There it is. Perfect, Fran. Perfect. Zoom. Okay. So now we see Zoom. Very good. And I can tell now what kind of browser you have. All right. Fran, on the screen that says Zoom, can you see that screen or do you yes. still just see me? Okay. On the screen that says Zoom, it says post attendee Zoom. And then right next to it, there's a, not the X, but there's a little plus sign. Can you click on that plus sign? Uh, no. There's a Zoom crowd meeting, then there's a Zoom join a meeting, and sign in, and then at the bottom it says version 505. Okay. Let's try this. Down at the very bottom of your screen. Okay. Do you see there's, there's the little white circle? Uh, no. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Now go one, two three, four spaces, and you see the little fox there? Nice. Nope, go back to your right. Another one, another one, right there. Go to the one, okay, now, where it yeah. says the big zooms, click there. Nope, not that, okay, back down at the bottom where the little fox is. When you hover over the little, nope, one more, over to the right, to the right, 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 down a little bit. See that little fox? There you go. Oh, whoops, back just a little bit. Okay. See how it brings up those two little windows there? Yeah. When you hover, it shows you. So there's the one on the left that says Mail Fran Cans Outlook. And okay. then on the right, there's the little version of the Zoom window. Okay. You just go up. And to the right, just a little bit, and click on that one. It went away. Yeah, well, stay on the picture. Now go up, go straight up. There you go, there you go. Stop. Go to your right a little bit. But, no, okay, come back down just a little bit. Down, down, down. Click. On right zoom? There. Yep, right there. Okay, now you got the zoom window, right? You see the big zoom window? Uh-huh, yes. Okay, up, take your mouse up, uh, keep going up, 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 stop. Now go to your left, 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 stop. Now go back to the right just a little bit. You see a little plus sign. Yes. There you go, click on that. That opened a browser. Now type in Toastmasters. Under. Right now, just start typing on your keyboard. T O, there you go. See how it's bringing up Toastmasters. Now look where it says Toastmasters. If you stop typing, you see how it says Toastmasters International Home? You can yeah. go down and click on that. Well, you're going to go shopping. That's fine. <laughs> I know what you're up to. You're shopping. <laughs> All okay. right. Now you're on the Toastmasters International website. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Now, do you see where it says, you see the big globe for Toastmasters? Yes. Okay. That's how you get back to the homepage. You see the little shopping cart shopping. at the top? Uh, Move your cursor up, 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 up. Ah, yes. Okay. Right next to that, it says log on. Yes. Click the log on. I know you like to shop, but we're going to get you logged on. Hey! Wow. Okay. Now, it already has your email and your password, so 
below your password, it says log in, click on that. Invalid username or password. So is that your email, Fran, Fran1439 at hotmail.com? Yes. Okay, so it looks like your password isn't right. So I need you to scroll down just a little bit over on the right hand side, you're gonna scroll down. Take your, take your cursor over to the right, to the right, to the right. Oh, there you go. Where it says forgot password, click on that. And they're gonna send you an email and tell you how to reset your password. Put your email in that Fran. That one, yeah. Now hit submit. Okay. And what it's going to do is it's going to send you an email to help yeah. you reset your password, okay? Okay. So do you know how to get to your email? Uh, hmm. Or do you, need, do you need Doug to help with I that? I think I can do it. Mm -hmm. I, I think if you go up to the top there, yeah. right above Toastmasters, you'll see email. Uh, no, down yeah. a little bit, down a little bit, down a little bit. Yes, there we go. There you go. Sure, error. Yeah, okay, that's not hooked up to your email. I thought maybe it was, it looked like it might be. Okay. Um, We'll help you get your password reset. Yeah, it's, it's just not set up to go to your email. Um, look across. Yeah, I'll have to. I'll have to to walk you through getting your password reset later. Okay. Couldn't I, couldn't I just try typing it again? At the website. Yeah. You could try, but I think I don't think it'll let you do it because we've said to reset it. Oh. Okay. Okay. But do you know how to get, now you know what, you are on Firefox, that's the name of your browser. Okay. That little foxy thing down at the bottom where it looks uh -huh. like a fox curled up, that's your browser. So when we talk about going to the website, that's where you, you click on that Firefox guy, not that one. To the right, that one. That's your Firefox. Oh, that okay. is not, how is that a fox? Well. Looks like a globe. It, it does kind of look like a globe. Um, that's the name of the browser, though. It's called Firefox. Oh, okay. Okay. All huh? right. Perfect. All okay. right. Well, we are going to take a little break, Fran. And at 930, we're going to start on a discussion about pathways. Okay. So we'll give everybody else a chance to kind of take a break. And um, let's see if we can get you back to the Toastmasters International website so that you can follow along with us, okay? Oh, yes. All right. If you go up to the top of your deal, above where it says you have an error, go up there where the little lock is. Uh, up, 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 whoa. up, up. Oh, you're fine. Up, 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 up. Right there. Is that, yep. Down the X. Yeah, just click that. There you go. Now click the plus sign again. Oh. Okay. And do you see over here, go down a little bit. And if you look over on the right hand side, down a little bit more, there's actually one that has the Toastmasters logo because you've been to that site before. It remembered that you've been up a little bit. I'm looking up here. Okay, there's, there's the bar where it says Google search, but if you look down from there, there's pictures. There's the Amazon A, yeah. there's okay. Outlook Live. You see the Toastmasters logo? Ah, yes. Click on that. That'll take you to Toastmasters International. Oh, there you go. Okay. You Let's like see. to shop. It takes you to the shopping site all the time. <laughs> all right. If you click on the big Toastmasters logo in the maroon bar, it'll get you to the home page. Okay. There we go.
Okay. And that's where we're going to start our next session. We're going to talk about pathways. And what I'm going to do, Fran, is I'm going to have you keep sharing your screen. Okay. And you're going to be our guide. And I'll tell you where to go. And then we'll talk about pathways. Okay? Yes. That way you get practice seeing it and clicking around. Okay. Because based on what I've seen, uh, I think everybody else is pretty comfortable with the clicking around on the website. And um, we'll let you practice and show everybody how to get to Pathways. Okay. So we're going to take just a couple of minutes. If you need to get some coffee or you need to go to the right. restroom, hey, we'll come yeah. back at 9.30. 9.30. Seven minutes. You got seven minutes, friend. <laughs> Don't go crazy. Coffee, coffee. Coffee, coffee. Get coffee. me some, too. Yeah. Carolyn, are you going to take a break? I'm, I'm going to hang out in case people have questions. Okay. Well, I wish I was there. I'd bring you something. <laughs> oh, I've got, I've, I've, I'm good. I've got my coffee. Oh, good. I've got my, I've got my coffee. I got my puppy. Aww. What more, what, what more could a girl want? That's right. right. I agree. No, coffee and cheese. <laughs> ah, coffee and cheese, Chris. Very good, Cecilia. Thank you all very much for your patience. I think this is going to be a, an excellent learning opportunity for a lot of folks. Okay, I have to hop off for a while. I saw that, Cecilia. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. And I, I see that Joe Simpson has joined us. I have pumpkin seeds. <laughs> you have pump oh, I love pumpkin seeds. I and love coconut, coconut chips. <laughs> Good morning, Joe. How are you doing? I'm doing excellently, thank you. What a Good. wonderful idea you have here. I have to confess though, I'm, I'm retired now, so I'm really careless about keeping up with emails. I did not see this announcement until mm -hmm. far too late to promote it amongst my club members. Oh, I am okay. I'm gonna tack on to the, the end here, but my question is, are you going to post this uh, on the district website somewhere so that it can be used as a static resource? Yes, they are, we, we are going to post it so it can be used as a static resource. And there's one more opportunity for people to catch this from beginning to end on a Saturday. And what date is that? Um, let me go look. Well, I mean, just I just I want the opportunity to do. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I, 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 really, I get you. I really would like to put that out there, you know, in a very, yeah, let's do this as a club sort of way. And I didn't get the opportunity to do for this morning. Okay. I want to say it's the beginning of August. Oh, yes. great. That gives us August, some... August yeah. 1st. Okay. That is a Saturday. It That's starts at 730. Saturday. It's early. Okay, yeah. But we go 7.30 to 11.30, and we go through all four sessions. Same four and, sessions. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. And so, but you can go out to the District 56 website and register right now. Okay. If you would like, let me see if I can even put the link to... Our club had been discussing doing something along this very lines for ourselves. And mm -hmm. so I really, you know, really am excited about what you're doing. Uh, want to get the most of it, want to point everyone toward it. And uh, and then if we decide we want to do something to augment it, you've already covered 85% of the ground. <laughs> oh, there you go. There yeah. you go. So I just put a link into the Toastmasters uh, calendar from the D District 56 website. I put it in the chat. Do you know how to find your chat? Did I lose you, Joe? No, I'm here. Sorry, struggling with Zoom control. That's okay. But I'm here, and I do In have the chat box. You can see the calendar. Yes, I have it. <laughs> there you go. 
So I'm using my, I was using my space band for my mute, unmute, and then when you turn the chat on, it starts typing instead of muting, unmuting. <laughs> and I think this might actually be the link to sign up directly to that seminar. Okay. So, the, Okay, I'm putting the word space in because I need to put a space in between. There you go. There's the one that shows you how to get to the, I'm pretty sure that'll get you to the registration page for the, for the August 1st, if you would like. Excellent. All right. Okay. Now for those of you who are joining us in about two minutes, we'll begin our third part where we walk through the Pathways Navigator. Carolyn, I have one question. Just yes, ma'am. So when we're recording our regular meeting roles on the base cam, as um, VPE, can they go in and record it for others for the meeting role or individual have responsible for recording their own? Um, I'm going to say some of that depends on your VPE. Now, typically, you're, you're going to be responsible for, re for doing your own you're going to have to do some of it yourself in base camp. You're, you're going to have to go through and do the exercises yourself, take your own assessments and submit your own, um, submit it to your VPE. Right. Then your VPE can pick it up and move it on for you. Okay. okay. Um, I know there are some VPEs that are very involved and are helping walk people through. I, I don't know particularly in yours how that's working out, but, um, you'll need to go into base camp yourself to do some of the things to get ready for your VPE to submit any awards you have. Okay, I'm just wondering for the meeting role, like grammarian, timer, I know- we oh, Okay, meeting roles, gotcha. Yeah, so is VPE got the ability to go in to put that on because not everybody know how to get to there. Okay, that's actually done through free toast host. That's not done through pathways. The you don't sign up for meeting roles through pathways. No, not Path sign up. Yeah. yeah. You put the date for the role you serve. That has to be done by the individual. Okay. Okay. Car Carolyn, that has to be done by the individual. In pathways? In pathways, yeah. yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry, I was getting free toast toast and I thought she was talking about signing up for roles in a meeting. All right, it is 930. So we'll be starting our third session here. Right now we have Fran sharing her screen because um, we're helping her learn her screen a little better and how to get around. So we're going to be a little bit patient and wait for Fran to come back and join us. Hopefully that won't be too much longer. But I will, while we're waiting for Fran, let you know that this third section is called um, Elementary Explorers. And what we're going to be doing is finding, exploring, downloading, um, the navigator that helps us learn all about pathways. So um, I wonder if I can take over. Can I kick her off? Uh -huh. Elizabeth, can you can you kick Fran off of sharing? I so can't. You can't. I'm going to try it right now. Okay. When she comes back, then we'll we'll get her back on and we'll use her screen. But until she gets here, we might want to. Cecilia. Hello, Cecilia, can you hear me? Cecilia was going to have to jump off at one point for a little oh. bit. Yeah, yeah well, she said. Another just hello. I'm still here. Okay, oh, okay. Just, just, you know, when you first sign on to Pathways and you're in that just home landing page on Basecamp, 
And you, you'll see a little settings here right at the top by your picture or by your name. Um, it's a little settings gear, like on your phone when you're changing your settings, that little gear looking thing. If you press that, it pulls up my account. So all you have to do is hit that settings gear, select my account, and all of those meeting roles are sitting there. And you can put the dates in really easy. I mean, you just sign into the Basecamp homepage, hit the settings gear, and then all of those meeting roles appear, and you can put dates in. Thank you, Pam. I already did that. I just wonder we can do it for the members. So after the meeting, we can update that for them. Uh, well, they, they really need to go into their own base camp. You can't get yep. into the base camp. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, Fran? Yes. I, we, we, we kicked you off sharing for just a little bit because I'm going to show a couple of things and then we'll go back to having you share. How's that? Okay, that's fine. Okay, so right now I'm sharing my screen. And as we noted earlier when we did our tour of the, of the international website, there are multiple ways to get to Pathways. You can get to Pathways by clicking on the button that says Pathways. You can get to Pathways by clicking on Education and then going to the Pathways Learning Experience there. You can get to Pathways by going to your profile and clicking go to Basecamp. All of these will get you to Pathways. I tell people if you are having trouble finding Pathways on the international website, you may not be on the international website because it is very easy to find Pathways from there. Any of those ways will work and when you, I'm going to go, I'm going in through my profile because I happen to be right there. So go to Basecamp, access your learning path and tutorials. I could go right there. If I wanted to start a new path, right there. The Navigator, it's right here. Now actually, we're gonna start by going to the Navigator because I wanna show you all the information that is available at your fingertips in the Navigator. Excuse me, Carolyn? Yes. What is the date that Cecilia was talking about? She's talking about when you sign, when you do roles, and we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll pick that up in just a minute, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay, yeah. First, I want to show everybody the Navigator, because the Navigator is your guide to all things Pathways, and honestly, it has most things Toastmasters in it. The virtual version of the Navigator, which I'm showing on my screen now, is broken up into sections. Welcome to Toastmasters, your Toastmasters Club, speeches and evaluations, pathways learning experience, and expand your journey. So those are the sections. Now I want to show you that you can, if you are somebody who really likes to have your own personal paper copy, if you like to touch things, you can come down here and on this Toastmasters page where I have the navigator, there is a navigator PDF. And if I click on that navigator PDF, it gives me my choice of languages. I am going to choose English because I don't speak Portuguese very well. So I'm gonna stick with English. And notice how my screen changed. I'm no longer on the website. I am in a document. This is the navigator. It tells me the document number up here in the upper right-hand corner. And over here in the upper, in the upper left-hand corner, sorry. The upper right-hand corner, it gives me an opportunity to download or to print this document. So I can download my very own copy of the Navigator right here. It's, a, it's 26 pages long, so it's a pretty good sized document. You could print it if you wanted, but if you click on download, it'll actually give you the opportunity to save it on your computer. All you have to do is tell it where you wanna save it. Step one, tell it where you wanna save it. Step two, remember where you put it. Because if you save it to your computer and you don't remember where you put it, it's not going to do you much good. So I actually have my very own Toastmasters folder. And I keep all things Toastmasters in that folder. That way I know if I've gone to, to anything in Toastmasters, it's going to be in that folder. So there's my copy of the Navigator right there. 
then I actually have a folder for my different clubs so I can keep things in there and it helps me stay organized. That's up to you. But if you're going to download things, make sure you know where you put them so that you can go back and find them. Now, the beauty of the navigator when you download it is you've got a copy no matter where you are. You can always open it and, and look at it. The downside to having a copy like this and not using the one that's online is when and if they add another path, it'll get added, the information to it will get added to the online navigator, but it's not going to get added to your personal version that you have copied on your computer. So every once in a while, you might want to go out and get a new copy of the navigator just so that any updates they make, you also have. When I'm in a document like this and I've come out of a website, I can either use my back arrow to get back to where I got it, or I can just um, open a new browser or something like that. So I'm going to click on my Toastmasters logo to get back to the home page. And there we go. Before I went in through my name, now I'm going to show you if I click on Pathways and I click on the Navigator takes me right back to that same Navigator page. Now, a lot of the things in Navigator are about Toastmasters in general. Welcome to Toastmasters, your Toastmasters club. This gives you all sorts of information about the roles in your club, your officer roles, all sorts of things are in here. And this is a great resource that you can give to people when they first start Toastmasters to help them get started. What happens during a meeting? How do I participate? Who leads my club? And if you want to learn more about who leads my club, well, there you go. Now there's all the information about the president and what they do and the vice president of, of education, membership, VPPR. So lots of information in the navigator, not only about pathways, but about Toastmasters in general and how the club operates. Since we're here to talk most about pathways, let's go back and let's dive into the pathways learning experience. We, we talked, we saw earlier that there are multiple paths. You can tell me how many paths there are in the pathways. We mentioned it earlier because somebody- 11. 11, very good. There are 11 paths. So if I want to know what the paths are, which paths can I choose from and how do they work, here's another place where we can find the 11 paths. Now this gives us a little bit more information about each path. So there are 11 paths. Each path has multiple levels. Who can tell me how many levels there are in each path? Fran, do you know five. how many levels? Five, there are five in each path. So we're gonna look more at that and how we move through those in just a couple of minutes. But if you're interested in what Pathways is, you can find out all the background of it. And I am actually going to share a video with you that's a welcome to Pathways. I'm going to actually play this. I'm going to stop sharing and then restart sharing because in order to share the video with you, I need to turn on the sound from my computer. So bear with me for just a second. I'm going to stop sharing. And then I'm going to reshare using the sound. and play a video. Welcome to the Toastmasters Pathways Learning Experience, an exciting, flexible, and interactive way to develop your skills. Building on Ralph Smedley's original vision and Toastmasters core competencies, Pathways upholds the club experience while offering new, revitalized educational content that helps you learn communication and leadership skills. The skills you will learn will give you a competitive advantage in the workplace and maximize your potential. Pathways allows you to leverage more than 300 competencies across more than 60 projects. These projects are divided into 11 specialized learning paths that allow you to tailor your experience to fit your goals and your pace. While all paths have the same level of difficulty and help to build public speaking skills and confidence, each path has its own unique focus. All 11 paths feature elective projects to choose from that allow you to further tailor your experience. All of this content is available online 
and is accessible from a computer, laptop, or tablet, allowing you to learn anytime, anywhere. Printed and accessible materials are also available. With Toastmasters members around the globe, we've also translated Pathways materials into a variety of languages, including French, Simplified Chinese, and Spanish. If you'd like to work online, Basecamp is the place where you'll find all of the materials for your learning experience, along with tools for your journey. On Basecamp, you'll be able to share feedback with fellow club members, view badges you've earned, access and save digital speech evaluations, and more. When you first begin Pathways, you can take an optional online assessment that will recommend the path that best aligns with your goals. Projects include a variety of interactive elements, including questionnaires, quizzes, menus, and expandable content. Educational videos model skills and provide demonstrations of the concepts you are learning. Pathways brings with it many new learning opportunities. It upholds your club experience while allowing you to tailor your education experience to fit your needs. And best of all, your first path is free with your membership. So what are you waiting for? Choose your learning path and you'll be well on the way to building a better you. Sorry, I had to get out of sharing full screen there. So what, again, the beauty of the online navigator is that you can go right into these videos. In the paper copy or the copy that you download, it'll reference things like this, but you can't just click on them and have them start like that. So wanted to kind of show you that. get back to the navigator. Part of the, the online navigator, there is this video library, and we showed this to you a little bit earlier, Fran, about all the different things that you could watch in videos and get information on for helping you in pathways. Many of the things here reference some of the things that you're going to see in your pathways journey, like great icebreakers, how to offer feedback, how to give a toast, rehearsal tips, impromptu speaking. These are all videos that are available online that you can see and watch and be able to, to get some help along your path. So for some of the projects, there's even things out here. Gestures, five basic club speaking tips, the club experience, job interviews all kinds of video tips available out here, literally one click away, just waiting for you. Okay. All right. So 11 paths, five levels per path, all the way through, one of the things that Pathways does is encourage and um, mark your progress. Now, somebody was asking earlier about the signing up for things. So we'll, we'll go ahead and let's, we're going to go to Basecamp. Now what you're seeing is my Basecamp because I'm sharing my screen. When you go to your Basecamp, you will see your information. But I'm going to go ahead and go to my Basecamp. And somebody was asking earlier about putting in roles. And so um, let's talk about that. Let's get off the new homepage thing. Do not show me. Okay. All right. So I think what Pam was saying is there's this um, gear up here. Is this the one you were talking about, Pam? You were trying to show somebody? Yeah. You hit through. that gear and hit my account. You have to you know, click on my account. There you go. And all of that shows up right there. There you go. So you can show your time zone, 
all counter and I can put in. Now, obviously I have done some of these roles and I haven't put them in. So I am not a good example of how to keep things up to date, but I could go out to free toast toast and get the dates that I've done things. But putting your dates in is, is easier, as easy as clicking on the little calendar icon and moving through the calendar to mark your dates. And, and I guess it's important when, let's say you're going through level one and you have to service an evaluator as part of level one, it's right. important to have the evaluator date in there because it's going to go and look for it to let you finish that level. So if you don't have anything in there, it's not going to let you mark it complete. Good to know. Can you please go back, Caroline? Uh huh. Where do you want me to go to? How did you get here? How did I get here? So. Changes have been said. Go to home page. All right. I have to let it let me out before I can get back in. So I'm in pathway. Do you need could you get here or do you need to get to this part? Um, do you know how to get here? Yes, to my base camp, correct. To your base camp. So we're in our base camp, right? And from your base camp, up in the very top row where the pathways logo is, go all the way across. You'll see a search bar and then a little icon. For your for for your picture and then there's a little gear wheel that says my account you click on my account okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh i see it <laughs> there you go and you can pick your signature Woohoo! fancy uh -huh. right and then you can tell the dates that you've done the different roles thank you and I'm sure you can clear those so that as you do the next path, you can put them in again. Okay. There you go. And once you've done it, I'm just going to cancel and get out of it. But that's, that's, I wanted to, somebody was talking, Pam was telling somebody and they were having trouble finding the gear. So I wanted to show you where that little gear was. Now, while you're in here, while we're in our base camp, we can look around and see our paths and our learning educational transcript. So we come in and you guys are going to see that I have three paths started. Engaging in humor, innovative planning and leadership development. And I actually owe a level two to dining out Toastmasters. So if I am in my innovative planning and I come in and I want to see what my next step is, I open my curriculum. I've finished level one. It's time for me to start level two. So on level two, I haven't done anything. My first, uh, my first project is understanding my leadership style. And to start that, I click on launch. And it's going to bring up the curriculum for me. probably have a few things open that I don't need to have open right now. So my first thing that I need to do is an assessment. And every project has an assessment at the beginning of the project and an assessment at the end of the project. And the idea is that if I'm not comfortable, I'm able to identify my leadership style. If I don't know what my leadership style is now and I go, well, I have an idea, but I'm not very confident in it. And I mark it a two now. At the end of this project, I'm going to reassess and go, am I now able to identify my leadership style better? Is it better than a two? Same. It might be the same. I might have learned that I didn't know as much as I thought I knew. So your, your, your assessment will change throughout throughout your uh, your growth period here. So if it starts at a two, maybe by the end it'll be a three. Maybe by the end it'll be a four. Don't know. We'll see where it is. To get to the next item in the assessment, I click next and it'll take me to the next item. I recognize my preferred leadership style. 
and I make that choice. So it's up to me what I think that is. After the assessment, I keep clicking next to finish the assessment. These little dots are going to tell me how many questions there are. So since there's six dots, there's six questions in the assessment. If I click over here, this is going to take me to the next activity. Uh, go back to the assessment, I would click the arrow over here and it'll take me back to the assessment. It takes me back to the beginning, back to the beginning. Okay. Not going to let me go much farther back because that's it. That's all I have. Understanding your leadership style and I begin. Now, if I've been in here before and I've done some things, I can move around in here using this menu. I can go to the assessment, I can go to the competencies, I can go to any of the parts that I'm working on, or if I know I'm done, I can go down and assess my skills afterwards. So I can jump through and find things this way, or clicking begin, I can just work my way through each of the sections. When it comes to a new section that I haven't been to before, it opens directions. It actually opens a set of directions on how to use this. So discovering my leadership style tells me to take this assessment to de determine my leadership style. Once I finish with the directions, I can click there and make it go down and I can get started. If I don't want to do this right now, I just want to go ahead and look at what, what kind of speech I'm going to, I can go past it. But I'm not going to be able to finish this path until I go back and do that. Okay. But I can go on and learn other things. I can go on and do check these out. Again, if I don't know how to use some section of this, I'm like, I hmm, wonder what I do here. Open the directions tab and it'll tell me, select each button to reveal more information. Oh, so if I click on these, new things are going to pop up. So there's directions included at each section. Now, many of these are interactive. This one's not quite as interactive. It has an awful lot of instruction in it. Review and apply. What are my directions here? Before you complete this assignment, take a moment to read through the questions on the screen. If you're not able to answer them comfortably, review the project. So it's telling me, if, you, if this all doesn't make sense to you, go back, take a look at it again. Project checklist. I find these very helpful. These are something you can go through and it'll take you step by step. A lot of times when I very first um, start, a, start a section, I'll go to this, print this out, and actually I don't print them, I save them to my computer. But this gives me the steps about what I need to do. I'm going to need to complete a questionnaire. I need to schedule a speech with my vice president of education. Then I need to write my speech. I need to rehearse my speech. Elizabeth, can you mute Fran for just a second while her phone's going? After you've completed all the components, I'm going to go in and assess my skills again. So that's this one's not a terribly long path. This, this particular project is not a long project, but it gives me step by step what I need to do. I'm in a document. So remember to get back to the to get back to the, the website. I can either click on my arrow or just go back to my other tab. A lot of times you'll see this more button and that gives you an opportunity to see even more information. So a lot of the things that were in the project checklist, review, organize, schedule, prepare, it's all in there. Then here's my evaluation of the project. Now, I haven't done this, so I'm not going to do the evaluation of the project. But if I had, it would give me my assessment, and then I would be done. Now, it says congratulations, but if I go and try to turn this in, my VPE is not going to accept it because I haven't done all the things I need to do. Okay? So I need to go back and make sure that I finish those. But I just wanted you to see how the curriculum modules are laid out very step by step. All right. We are going to, now to get out of this, I'm just going to X out, Xing out of my document. Here's where I went into that was in my curriculum. So if I go back to the tab right before it 
it'll take me back to this. So I've launched this before. Now I can go in and I can view the training details or I can go back and I can launch it again. Anytime I wanna launch it, all I have to do is click that launch button. I can go back and look at what I did in level one. In level one, I can tell I've completed them all because I have little check marks on them. But if I wanna go back and review something, I can always go back and relaunch any of the curriculums. If I wanna view my certificate, I can actually see my little certificate. Yay! I achieved level one of innovative planning. All right, so that's that's the moving through the curriculum and how that looks. Tutorials and resources. Oh, there's Pamela McCown <laughs> putting up new pictures. Well, I ask a question. You may ask a question anytime. Sorry, not to take us back, but I wanted to know why would one need to enter those dates that I did, general evaluator, why would one need to enter those in here? Because some of the, um, to complete some of the paths, some of the projects on the path, you have to do something. So for example, in the, in the very first, in the ice, in the very first um, level, you do your icebreaker speech, then you give it a speech and you get an evaluation, then you give an evaluation right. and you do another. So that given evaluation, in order to know when you did that, that's why you would need to put that date in there to show that you did an evaluation on a certain date. Because okay. otherwise, if you haven't put a date in and you haven't done an evaluation, when they go to check and see, did you do all the steps of your path, it's not going to be in there and it won't let you finish it. Okay, thank you. Okay, so in some of the in some of the assignments, there's a role that it asks you to take on. Um, it may say, okay, you need to sign up with your uh, VPE to be a Toastmaster. And so you would need to say the date that you were the Toastmaster so it could see that you had done the things that it's asked you to do. So in the old program, you had your leadership manual and you had your, your um, speech manual. Mm -hmm. Now it's all kind of combined in together in the path but to document the, the things that we used to document in the leadership manual where you showed how you did the roles, that's where you're doing it in that, in that with those calendar yeah. dates. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Okay. So one of the things I like most about Basecamp is this tutorials and resources section, because I can click here and go get resources for all kinds of things. So here's tutorials and resources. There are 1500 over over 1500 resources out here now not all of them are in, in English so not all of them are helpful to me but a lot of them are and you can look at either tutorials you can look at tutorial videos there's evaluation resources I like to go out to the evaluation resources I click on English and then any evaluation I need if I'm going to be evaluating somebody in my club and I know what speech they're working on I can come out find what speech they're doing maybe they're doing one where they need to do the effective body language click on this and now I have the evaluation document that I need to give them their evaluation so we ask speakers to get this information to their evaluators but if they don't, if they forget, or if something happens, you can always go out and find that yourself for any speech. Then it gives you the entire evaluation document. You can do this either, you can, because it's a document, look, evaluation resource, I can download it, I can print it. If I download it, if I put it on my computer and I save it, I can type things in. I can save this document and then I can actually go out and put my evaluation out on somebody else once they've done their speech. I can go out, give them my evaluation and actually upload my evaluation to them as long as they're in my club. Now, if they're not in my club and I'm evaluating them, say I'm, I'm doing something for um, 
Elizabeth, well, Elizabeth's in one of my clubs, but Fatima is not in one of my clubs, I don't think. And if Fatima asked me to evaluate a speech that she did, I can either email that to her and she can upload it, or I can email it to her VPE and her VPE can upload it. But I can only upload things to the people that are in the clubs I belong to. Doesn't mean I can only evaluate people in the clubs I belong to, but in order for, I can only upload to their stuff if they're in my club. Right, so let's go back to the home here. Pathways learning experience. Take it just a minute. And there we go. So when people, when, when I upload or when people upload my stuff to me, where does it go? Well, I have a whole document section here that I can go to. There's a whole lot of documents. So my level one files go in level, go here, level two files, level three files, level four files, level five files. And here's just a general documents if I want to keep something for somebody, keep something for something else. Um, in my level one out here, because I finished it, here's my um, evaluate. This is the, uh, this is the, um, icebreaker project completion request when I said I finished it and I turned it in and then um, my did my project checklist and I handed it over to my VPE so she knew I had everything there but I actually so I typed this out and then I saved it here and I had it ready to go and then this I believe I documented being um, an evaluator with this because I had, uh, at the time, I didn't know how to go in and do it in the settings, but it's in there. It's also in there. I noticed it was the same. February 15th, 2018 was in there. So I, I had documented it this way, but um, it can be done. Um, it's because I didn't know I could do it in the calendar. All right, let's go back. Badges, as you complete levels, you're gonna earn badges. So you can, you can get badges, I've got one badge here because I've completed level one. Now, um, I've also gotten one for being imitative and adaptable, and if I ever wanna know those are my badges. I can go back and see my ePortfolio. There's the badges, there's the documents. Oops. Those are the same documents that were in my thing. So that's what's in your ePortfolio. Feedback. This will tell me why I got the badges. So I received a badge from Sharla and I received a badge from Pam. Um, these were self, <laughs> I have to confess, I didn't have any badges and they came to one of my sessions and so they gave me badges so I'd have some badges. So <laughs> those were shamelessly requested, but they're there now so that I can show you that when you get a badge, you not only get the badge, but you get a little note from the people and telling, telling you why you got the badge and then you can actually share a comment back. And all of this is in your Basecamp profile under My Badges. My Feedback, this is where I can request and give feedback to other people. So in My Feedback here, this is about me. Now, if I want to give feedback to somebody, I can come up and I go to my search. And I'm going to search for Fran. And there she is, Fran Cans. So I can go in now, this is Fran Cans. I can give Fran feedback because she's in one of the clubs that I'm in. So this is about Fran, she's in Dining Out Toastmasters, she's been a member all this time. Now I can actually give her feedback. And I can say, 
for example, congratulations on getting started in pathways. And even if I am a horrible speller, it will help me out. And since Pam, uh, since uh, Fran is our grammarian, that's always a good thing for me to do is check my spelling. So I can, I can, I can give her feedback. And then if I want to award her a badge, I just click on this little badge right here, and I can say courageous. I want to give her a badge for being courageous for getting started in Pathways because I know it was a big step for her to step out and get online and get it started in the pathway. So now I'm going to post that and give her. So now Fran has received a badge from me for being courageous. And it says, congratulations on getting started in oh, Pathways. Thank you, my dear. So now when Fran goes out to her profile, she'll be able to look it up and she'll see a badge. <laughs> and even though she hasn't necessarily, I don't know if you've started your icebreaker in your path yet or not, but you've got your first badge already because wow. you were courageous and attended our class today. I put in a good word for Toastmasters uh, last weekend. Uh -huh. I, was, I was doing an ashram that I went to on the uh, screen and it had <laughs> grammarian or whatever, fabulous friend up there instead of my name. Instead of your name. <laughs> And I had to explain <laughs> about why I was fabulous, fabulous Fran, Fran instead of Fran <laughs> Because cause we give her, when she I joins our meetings, we go in and we change her name. <laughs> <laughs> but it was funny because then some of them, it was during part where we we're kind of comparing notes on what we've been praying for. Mm -hmm. And some of them, well, I used to belong to Charles Nashville, but it was too much talking or too many other people wanted to talk and just on and on of these people that had some past experience, but none of them currently belong to Toastmasters. They well, all got out of it for one reason or another. You're trying to bring them back to in. Dot. <laughs> there you go. Bring them back into the fold, friend. Bring them back you in. Explain? They decide to leave fabulous friend up there. <laughs> so I go, okay. <laughs> Well, I see that you've gotten it changed now. You're not fabulous Fran right now. Oh, I'm not? Nope, it says Fran can't. Oh, how boring. <laughs> yeah, Does anybody nice. have a question about pathways in general? This is Fatima, I have a question. Okay. And I contacted Toastmasters about this question, and I don't. I wasn't happy with their answer. Maybe you have a better answer for me. <laughs> oh, so oh, wow. I, I am a mentor <laughs> of a person who went through uh, his icebreaker, and he went through the first two speeches, and he wants to change his path. And I looked up in all of the Toastmasters, and there is some documentation that says, you cannot change your path after 90 days. But I couldn't figure out if that meant you bought the paper copies. No, um, it's once, once you start the path, even online, you have 90 days before, uh, I guess it's 90 days if that's what they've told you. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that's three months. So that's enough time to get started in the path. If you decide you want to switch it you can within that 90 days but after the 90 days if he wants to change paths he'll need to purchase a new path and start over yes okay now um yeah okay i mean i would say if he's not going to pursue the first path the same icebreaker could count in the other one, but that's probably up to your VPE. Yeah, because the, the path, every path is the same. Every path has an icebreaker. One. And if as yeah. far as, but but like if I'm doing two paths, I can't, I, I need to do two different icebreaker speeches. Yeah, yeah. But if he's not ever gonna go back to that path, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's kind of one of those um, integrity and yeah. honesty and, you know. Okay. But if he's not gonna go back to that path, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think it would be an issue. Okay, thank you. 
but you don't get to use the same icebreaker speech for the next 10 years. You have to do different icebreaker speeches as you start new paths. And you said gonna, that. Once, you, once you finish a path. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So like when he, when he gets ready to do his second, his third path or his fourth path, he's gonna need to do another icebreaker speech. You don't get to keep using it over and over again. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I, was, I always get scared when, when you want my answer to be better than Toastmasters International. That's that's. Well, the the only reason that concerned <laughs> that um, they sent me an email promptly, but they said that they were forwarding my question to orders and supplies, and I couldn't figure out why they would do that. Well, if you were trying to get it changed, get the path changed. There's different people that do different things at Toastmasters. Mm -hmm. So when we go out to the Toastmasters International website and you see the contact us there's um if you send a question about changing paths for example to membership the people that do the membership stuff they're going to forward it over to the people who do more information on pathways so if you're trying to ex orders and exchanges because you purchase your paths I mean, your first path you get free, but after that you purchase paths, it's considered a purchase. That's why they would send it to orders and exchanges to try to get something but this, but, changed. But this was the free pass. The same right. It, okay. Yeah, because it's, they give you the first path free, but it's like they've given you a $20 gift. So if you're trying to change that, it's mm -hmm. an exchange. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, any other questions? Yes, Caroline. Yes, Faye. You gave Fran the um, the feedback. How did I give Fran the feedback? Yes, I, I do know how you gave it to her. I trying to do the same thing on my own screen. Okay. Would you like to share your screen and we'll walk you through? Let me stop sharing. That will make it easier for you. Uh, a little bit of feedback there. There you go, Faye. All right, so there you are. So you're in base camp, and it says that we are in. So you've picked Sarah? Yes. Right? Okay. Now, see right where it says base camp profile, right next to it, it says feedback. Up at the top, up a little bit, up, 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 up. There you go. There you go. Click on feedback. And now you can share your feedback with Sarah. So, so you're still giving it to Sarah. Now you just type it and then you can give her whatever. And right now you're showing it so that anybody in your club can see it. But if you wanted it just to be something that she could see, you could change that down there to uh, just Sarah or her manager. There you go. Okay. okay. I, 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 did, I did do all of that once I clicked the, I wrote everything here. And then once I clicked the badge, uh -huh. then at the bottom here, it shows to everyone again. That was my scare. Do I try that so you see? Um, go ahead. Uh, then this is right here. Well, the badges, the badges are visible, but the actual feedback, I don't believe is. But it says feedback. That was my skin. <laughs> yeah, I get you. I get you. Okay. So is it is it going to be to everyone? Uh, the badge we, they'll be able to see. They won't be able to see your comments. The feedback. Okay. Right. I'll do it. I just wanted okay. to be sure. Yeah, I believe, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Well, Fran, are you ready to, to try something? Sure. Okay, share your screen. Okay. Uh. green button. I did the green. Now you got to figure out what you want to share. Watch your window. Hang on. 
you. Share your screen, not the window. Okay. And then click share. Okay. I need to let the window that you want to share. I lost already. Hang on. Uh, share sound. You don't, need to share, you don't need to share the sound, but above that, do you see, if you scroll up, does it say share screen? Uh, no. Does it have a picture There's of the select screen? Select a window or an application. Okay, select a window or an application, and then it has choices for you. You pick a picture. Ah, okay. So select one and then the share button in the bottom left-hand corner of that little white box. Uh, it, instead of a choice, it says restore, move, size, minimize. Um, let me share for just a second and I'll show you what I think you should see. So when you first oh. click on your, when you first click on share, you get a box that looks like this box right here, like this black box I'm going around, All right? Okay. And my options are I can share screen one. And since you only have one screen, you won't have the ability to, use, to do screen two or any others. Whoops, what happened there? So you, screen one, screen two, screen three, you're gonna wanna share your screen. So you click on that and then you click on the share button and it should let oh, you share. Okay. Okay, so let me okay. stop sharing and let you go back. So click on the green button that says share screen first. I did. Okay, and you've got the window that came up. You have one that says share screen. There yeah. you go. There you are. All right, and you're on your website. Yes. So we see the Toastmasters website. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, we can try logging you in again. We'll see if we can get you logged in this time. Up here? Yeah. Fred, yeah. now do you think your password changed? No. Okay. Well, you can, you can yes, try. Sir. I would, yeah, it didn't let you go in last time. Yeah, it says either your email or your, either your username or your password isn't right. So you want to try redoing your password? Let me double check. Hmm. That's yeah. work. Yeah, it's still. We remember we sent that button that we said to to send you a new link to yeah. to update your password. Um, uh, up at the top where it says, "Would you like to update this?" Say, "Don't update." Say no. Yeah. Say, "Don't update." We need to get you into your mail, um, so that you can find your. Um, do me a favor. Go up to the top. Mm -hmm. Up, up, up a little bit more. Okay, not quite that far. Down just a little bit. Right there. Click right there. All right, that's your calendar. All right, I thought maybe that was your email. I didn't see. Okay. Um, we need to find your email. That, we tried that email button there, and that wasn't it. Um, uh, you have it through Hotmail, right? Yes. Okay. Go over to the plus sign and open a new a new plus. a new tab. So where uh, plus? So you, after the calendar, there's post attendee Zoom, 
And then there's yeah. the Toastmasters International website. Oh, and then thanks. there's a little plus sign. Click on that. There you go. All right. Um, thought I saw one for mail in here. Amazon Outlook Live. So you got the big A where it's come, oh, come down. Know. See where Amazon is? See yeah. The big A for Amazon. Then right next to that, it says Outlook Live. Yeah. Try that. Click on that. Because those are the sites you've been to the most, so that might take you to where your email is. Yes, that looks like it. Does that look familiar? Yes. Okay. Oh, look at that. Toastmasters ah. International. Now go up to the first one. It says password reset. Slow. That's okay. We will get you on. Did you click on that? Yes. There you go. It you recently it. requested your password reset. Click the link below. So click on that link where the blue line is. There you go. It's going to open another window. That's not going to let you use. So put in a new password. It probably won't let you put in the same one you had before, but you can try it. Well, is that one? Is that I don't know. I can't tell what that one is. So I would, I would erase that one and then put in what you want it to be. Okay. And you'll need to put it in twice. In twice. Okay. Yeah, you put it there it and then you put it. I think it's going to have to be, you can try the same one. You can try it and see if it'll let you put the same one in. But a lot of places won't let you do the same one two times in a row. There you go. Type it again. All right, click submit. Do you want to just save that? I would if I were you in Firefox. There you go. Woohoo! You're in. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So now, because you haven't logged in in a while, it's wanting you to update your privacy and consent. So, do you want Toastmasters to be able to send you emails? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, then click the yes button. Do you want to get mail from Toastmasters? Yes or no? Yeah. Okay. The next one is for third parties. By placing an order in the Toastmasters store, you agree to the information being used by Toastmasters International third party distributor. The distributor is only going to use it for Toastmaster stuff. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. Now you're going to have to scroll down a little bit. There you go, because you got more questions. Phone, would you like to receive calls from World mm -hmm. Headquarters? Okay, back up. There you go. Oh, no, you're oh, good. It says you right. updated. It lets you. You're done. <laughs> All right, so now you're on, and this is, this is, see where it says welcome, Francis, up at the top? Hang on. Whatever leaders. Ah, oh, yes, okay. Click on that. Now we're about to see all about you in Toastmasters. There you go. You can scroll down a little bit. You're enrolled in one path, right? I am. It, that's what it says. It says you're enrolled in one path. Do you know what path you're enrolled in? Oh. <laughs> we'll click on that and we'll go see. <laughs> Wait, then go to my transcripts. That sounds good to me, yep. Let's go see what you're enrolled in. Path and learning. So you have presentation mastery. All right. See this new homepage thing that popped up? Yes. 
there's a little box down at the bottom of that box that says, do not show me this message again. Yeah. Click on that little box. There you go. Now click on the X up and to, there you go. Right there. Perfect. I'm pointing to it on my screen, but I know that doesn't help you. It just makes me feel better. <laughs> Presentation mastery. So that is the path that you're on. So open your curriculum over there. It also has the navigator. Yep, you've got it right there. You can always go to the navigator and see it if you want to. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Weird. You want to go see your curriculum? Want to see where you are? Yeah. Okay. Uh, now go up one to presentation mastery. Okay, go over to the right, over to the right, 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 where it says open curriculum. There you go, click right there. All right, Fran, we're gonna get you started on your path. Are you ready? Okay. Level one. View details. View details. Icebreaker, you the checklist. You know how to do an icebreaker speech. Yeah. So go up, see where it says icebreaker, completion, presentation, mastery, view okay. checklist. Have you, okay. you haven't given your icebreaker for this, for this one yet, right? No, I haven't done any. Okay, well click on view checklist. Do what? Move your arrow to where the big blue box is, says view checklist. Ah, okay. Now let's scroll down. It just says completion. The member completion, all oh, components of this assignment, this part. Oh, okay, this is, this is the, I got you, okay. Over on the left-hand side, it says back. Click that back button. All right, let's click on icebreaker completion presentation mastery. There you go. Well, that's the same thing. So it says, all right. Go to home under pathways where the big pathways logo is up at the top. Go to home. There you go. You hover and then click down below. So when you, when you move your mouse over to the right a little bit and then come back to home. There you go. Now go down and click home. There you go. It's a hovering click. You got to hover above and then go down. There we go. Please disable your pop-up. Okay. Uh, once your pop-up is... So we need to... See where that yellow bar is at the yeah. top? See where it says options? Click on the board uh, that says options. Wait a minute. There's a yellow bar on it's the right-hand side. There's a right yellow bar that says Firefox prevented this site from opening a pop-up window right and on the far right side it says options far right no, no, down okay, down down you. in the yellow bar there's a white button that uh, says you're, options. you're blocking it how did i click you out of there <laughs> you click me out of there well your box is covering the yellow oh, my thing. box is <laughs> well it is <laughs> I am in your way. <laughs> okay. Um, it's not blocking it on my screen. <laughs> it's got a little X. All right. You're going to have to um, move. I got, oops. Yeah, move my picture out of the way. Oh, no, don't do the, oh. Oops. I wanted you to click on options. Oh. Well, all right. In the please disable your pop-up blocker. Yeah. That box. Click on the blue text. Yeah, in that options button, it would have let you let the part the, the pop-ups in. Okay, click there. I did. There we go. Okay, let me read this for a second. Uh, 
<laughs> okay. Um, 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 let's see. Go to go to the top of the page. Mm -hmm. Over to the right. Farther. Probably under my picture. Keep going to the right. Can you go any farther to the right? Yeah, it's mute and then three dots. No, to the on the browser on the um on the the Firefox page. Okay. Okay. Keep going over. 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 Now go. Oh, well, you were almost there. There's three little lines stacked on top of each other. Ah, Click on okay. those. There you go. Okay. Now we're going to go to scroll down to options. Down, 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 down. Not quite that far. Up a little bit. Up a little bit. Up. Up, up. Go up a little bit. Move your little mouse up a little bit. Oh, wait, where'd you go? Okay, now you went down. Now go down. <laughs> Keep going. I, I, I'm a little below you, so below that, go down. Go down. It says sign into Firefox and it says protections, protections dashboard. And then oh, it wow. says, do you see options? This nice. one has a little gear. It says options above that. It's above yeah, that. It doesn't. Yeah, okay, I think I I've got to sign up to Firefox. No, I don't want sign up to Firefox. Go down below that protections dashboard. I don't have protections. What I have is pictures of you, me, Elizabeth. Okay, you got to move the pictures out of the way. Okay, how did I do that? Just um, at the top of the picture thing. Just move them over to the side. Mm -hmm. Ah, there you go. I got rid of all of you. Yeah. Okay, now. Now go down to options, I think. Okay. Joe or somebody, if anybody's more familiar with Firefox and knows how to do this, feel free to jump in. Click on options. There we go. I run Firefox, but I'm afraid I don't really understand it. I'm almost as lost as Fran is. Bless her. <laughs> okay. All right. That's all right. We're gonna we're gonna find it. Go to privacy and see over on the left hand side. It says general home search yeah. privacy and secure. Click on privacy and security. There we go. Now we're going to scroll down. Scroll down, keep going down, 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 down. Let's see. Sign into sync. Manage. Browser is being managed by your organization. She lost click her. Click on sync. Oh, click on sync. No, that's what she did to open that. She got out of privacy and security. Oh, go back to privacy and settings, Fran. There you go. Okay. Now move, now your, move your cursor left. over to the right. Yeah. Now I'll go down. Ah, okay. Standard blocked for. Okay. Uh, can you use the scroll bar on the right and go down a little bit? Yeah. Uh, I'm looking for pop ups. Keep going down. History. Permissions. Autoplay. Oh, but there we go. Where it says pop up, block pop up windows. Yes. Um, click on the exceptions next to that. Over to the right, it says exceptions. Okay. Uh, no, up one, up one, up one, up one. There you go. Click on that. And put in Toastmasters. dot org uh, 
All right. Now click allow. Allow. Right below that box you just typed in on the right hand side, it says allow. Okay. There you go. Now hit save changes. It's in the lower right hand corner. There you go. Woohoo! Woohoo! All right, let's go back to the Toastman. So now you can close that window, close that that tab, the little X up next to options. Uh, go up a little bit, right next to options. Click that. Yep. All right. Now click the next X that says pop up blocker settings. Click that. Good. Now click that one to get out of your email. There you go. Now you're back. Now log in. You might want to make sure you have the right password in there. How can I? It's just dot. It's just dots. Well, no you could, yeah, you could take it out and. Well, it's gone now. Yeah. So now you got to click all the pictures with cars. I'm not sure why that's doing it. That must be something you have set car. So you want the one. Yeah, there you go. Click that one. The next one. Okay, down. Nope, that one does that one doesn't have, doesn't have a car in it, does it? Oh, just cars. Yeah, just cars. Oh. So undo the one. The top row, the right one. No. Nope. Top row. Yeah, undo that. There you go. And then the bottom row on the right hand side. And verify. What did I just do? Well, because your email, uh, they're asking you to verify that you're who you say you are. Okay. <sighs> okay. And you're in. Woohoo! Yeah. We've done the, scroll down a little bit. There's one of these questions you haven't answered. That's why it keeps giving it to you. Scroll down. On the privacy and update one. There you go. See on phone, you don't have an answer. So you either need to say yes or no to whether you want to receive calls from Toastmasters. Okay. And now hit save. Okay. All right. Now go back to welcome Francis. Uh. Now go to your base camp over there on the it's a, the box on the left with the blue. Yep. Go. It says go. Oh. Got to click where it says go. Please disable your All right. Box. Scroll up to the yellow bar. Don't click the X. Go over to options. And say allow pop ups from Toastmasters. We've already told it that, but I don't know why it's. Click there, right there. That's good. Hmm. Why is it? Told you computers don't like. There's no need to refresh. She needs to refresh? Yes. Okay. Come over to the left, Fran. Yeah. All the way to the left. See the little house? Yeah. And then right next to it, there's a little arrow with a curve. Yes. Click on that arrow with a curve right there. Got her in a new tab though. Go back to see where it says uh, up at the top it says new tab and the next to that says welcome realize your potential. Yeah. Click on welcome realize your potential. <laughs> Click on that little X in the pop up blocker. There you go. You're in base camp. Whoo! You are in your base camp. <clears throat> wow. <laughs> so go to your paths and learning. It won't be as hard there. Oh, go up one. Tutorials? Nope, up, up. Paths and learning at the very top. Uh, education way up. Trend. Okay. There you go. Okay. 
presentation mastery now. Now, why couldn't we get you go? She's clicking away. Okay. Open curriculum. See the big button that says open curriculum? There you go. There you go. Now, where it says view checklist, see that little triangle next to view checklist? Click on that. Hang on. Oh, you're in the way. Okay. Hang on. Yeah, I'm in your way. Okay, there you go. View checklist. No, no, no. Click on the little triangle next to it. <laughs> Hit the back button. Do the back over here. It's on the left hand side. This? This? Uh, nope, nope. Down, down, down. Yeah. It says back. Okay. There you go. No. Okay. Next to view checklist, there's a little triangle. Yes. Click on the little triangle. View checklist. So why isn't it giving you the option to launch your curriculum? It seems to think you've already done. Pam, you have any suggestions? She went away. Yeah, maybe so. Carolyn, no, I believe I'm, that's I'm just wondering where you are. Uh, this is the approval for completion of the iceberg. Yeah, so it acts like she's already completed it. Please. Mark complete for the member to move to the next project. Um, is she in? So she has submitted an icebreaker, but it shouldn't keep her from going forward. Can have her click that back button. Click the back button. If I'm not mistaken on the icebreaker, you approve it yourself that you say you completed it doesn't have to go to the VPE. All right. So she clicked on view checklist to get to where she just was. Yeah, but it doesn't give her the launch curriculum. All right. So or launch. have her scroll down and see what's down there on the bottom of that screen. Hey, Pam, is this because she has the print option? She chose print. Oh, as yeah, 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 exactly. I, did, I haven't never, like I say, I haven't never seen this frame. And it's because Oh, I'm okay. So she, she didn't sign up to do it online. You got a paper copy of the, of yeah. the path? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. That's okay. What's happening here. I thought this is so unfamiliar. I, well, you when you have the paper, it seems like when you have the paper copy, it would be one or the other. I mean, what does she do with the paper when she fills it out? Has to give it to her VP or upload yeah, it? Yeah, usually if you have the print version, it's the president that can go in and approve stuff for you. Okay. Um, but yeah, so you are correct. Whoever said she's got to approve it herself. Somebody has to approve it for her. Oh. Okay, so she can't see all the things that we see because she's got the printed, the paper materials. Well, she should be able to, though. You should be able to do both, but I don't, I don't know it why. It does view training details in there. Yeah, Where you are now. Nope. <laughs> Yeah, I had never seen this before, and that's why I was I was going, okay, I'm gonna punt. <laughs> okay. That makes sense. That's why I had never seen that screen before too. Because I have the printed? Because you have the printed materials, it looks different than what we all see. Hmm. But you probably did that. So it does look like um, somebody needs to check this for her to be able to move forward. Okay. 
All right, I will talk to um, Charla. Our VP. Yeah, Charla. Okay. All right, Fran. Okay. Well, thank you for <laughs> teaching me something new today. I had absolutely no idea what it looked like with a printed version. Now you all know. And apparently neither did it several other people. So who, who was the smart one who knew that? That would uh, be Joe. Joe, I think. Joe. <laughs> Joe Simpson or Joe Ido? Joe Ido. Oh. Yeah, now she's going to get a big head. Okay. Well, has anybody not signed up for Pathways? Because we know Fran has now. <laughs> I know Elizabeth says, Fatima, you're signed up for Pathways? Fatima? And we lost Fatima. Faye, are you still there? Yes. Have you signed up for Pathways already? Yes, completed a path and I'm on the second. Oh my goodness, okay. Let me leave you alone. Joe, have you signed up for Pathways? You're good to go? Joe Simpson? Sorry, I'm still struggling with my controls. <laughs> that's okay. That's it. Yes, know that's... I am. I have just begun level four in uh, strategic relationships. All right. Well, then you all are ahead of me. So, <laughs> but not I... on, not on the navigator. I'm not. Not on the navigator. <laughs> okay. That's what I'm here for. I'm learning so much. So thank you, Carolyn. Well, good. I'm glad. All right. Well, if everybody's signed up for a path, then what might be most helpful for you guys is if you um, unless you have specific questions. Do you just want to explore what's in the navigator or what would help you the most right now? Because you've got me for another 30 minutes to an hour if you want me. Now, I'm afraid I don't have any, any deeply intelligent questions at this point, but that's because I have not fully explored these, you know, sites and screens that you showed us today. Mm -hmm. so I'm looking forward to doing that between now and next Saturday. Okay. Maybe I'll have more intelligent questions. Then you'll have more questions. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Now, this, is, this is precisely what I need. Not only am I still sluggish in getting really up to speed with, with pathways in general, uh, I have also just taken on the role of VP education for my club. So I really need to get on the stick. Thank you. Very good. Very good. Well, um, and I know we took a, a lot of time uh, helping Fran get, get moving through, but uh, A, I learned about yes, the, the difference helpful. in the print, um, so I hope it was helpful to other people. Now, I'm, I'm happy, Joe, uh, if you want to, we can have Fran stop sharing. We can let you share it if there's some place you'd like to go and let us follow you around if you want to just get from comfortable sharing your screen and uh, clicking around. Okay, are you talking to me again? I'm sorry. I am I talking to you again. Sometimes Joe Ido is around. Hello, Joe. I love you. <laughs> I love Joe Ido too, but I'm talking to you. <laughs> All right. Uh, so you know, Fran, not... can you stop, stop viewing? You? Fran, can you push the button up at the top that says stop sharing? I can. Hang on. There you go. Oh, All right. There's you again. Yeah, you know, I keep popping up. <laughs> All right, so Joe said, Simpson, do you yes, want to share as, your screen? As I said, well, I am not logged on, and I don't know that I want to go through all of that, but I will uh, encapsulate for you. The thing I have struggled with most to this point is moving from place to place within a project, knowing for sure that I have, you know, progressed where I thought I had. Two or three times I thought I was finished, but I wasn't. And I didn't go through the last submit or miss the final evaluation. And, and in struggling to find what I was lacking, I struggled to move around within the project effectively. Now, you have sort of given me some insight as to how I can you know, look at that better. Mm -hmm. But if you know any great or super tricks you can point to for a rapid assessment of 
where you stand again within any given project, point to that for me once more. Okay. And I'll what? see if I can struggle to get my own uh, screen up. Understood. So, um, within your within each path, when you open the curriculum, it gives you your levels over here, so you can tell if it's complete. It'll have a check mark. So for engaging humor, I finished the icebreaker. Okay, yes. So you can see the check mark. If there's not a check mark, then you haven't finished that piece. Okay. But if so I know for th there's something that's keeping me from getting the check mark, but I think I've finished that piece. When I'm trying then, to go in and determine what remains to be done. Right. I'm then you need to go in, click that. launch. And it's taking time. <laughs> Maybe if we sing the Jeopardy song. I'm All right. <laughs> so evaluation and feedback, we'd have begin. Um, I don't believe, so there's not, there's not anything within these that shows which of these you've been to. So my best suggestion would be start at the beginning make sure you recognize what you see and then use these sidebar arrows to go to each section. If there's something that you need to do on this page, now there's nothing to do on this page so you can keep right. going through. Now here, you may print or download a PDF. That's not a requirement, so there's nothing that you have to do on that page. If you hadn't done the assessment, you would be able to see that there. Right. So you would have to go in and do it. And I haven't done it. Where I mostly struggle is the after assessment, the completion of that, and then the submission of the of the project as being yeah. complete. Somehow I get locked in a loop in there and I can't I have difficulty. Now I've succeeded at doing it too, but I yes, yeah. so much. I struggled yeah. so much that I'm not sure when I succeed what I did right. <laughs> right. And see, I'm not at a point in a path that I've got one that's all ready to just show you that piece. Let me, I, I, I am working at getting my base camp open. Let me see now if I can help you there. Okay. Because that's um, to, to show you that I, I need to be ready to do it. And um. Okay, uh, let me see now if I can share my screen. I'm new at this. I do apologize. That's all right. This screen. is a good Will chance to practice. Select a window that looks like my screen there. Um, okay. You're about to share something. Uh, I am sharing. There you screen. are. Yes. Okay, I, I made very sure to close out all the, you know, ugly windows. So <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You don't want us looking at your Christmas uh, list. Exactly. So here we are. Okay, so I am logged in. Welcome, Joe. I am on my navigator. Yes, you are. Uh, I want to go to, actually, I want to go to base camp. And to, from here, I get to base camp. Um, you can. Pathways. Go to base camp. I thought there you go. Asking for Okay. okay. We are experiencing connectivity issues with Basecamp. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Apparently, I cannot go to Basecamp. I can launch the navigator. Let's go back. Well, wait, wait, wait. Why couldn't you go to Basecamp? I, I'm getting an error message from Toastmasters telling me Basecamp access well, the, experience. This is if you are. If, you may yeah, not it says be. If you're experiencing. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. go okay, ahead and well, scroll down. See. Just click go to base camp. There we are. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. All right. Unless you want to keep seeing it. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. All right. 
Okay, my, my transcript, that's what I want, right? Pat's That'll get you there. That'll absolutely get All you there. Right. Now. Scroll down a little bit. I am strategic in relationships. strategic relationships. So I did the open. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, so in level three, see, you've got a check mark on make connections. Right. And you've got a check mark on the last one. But I have done the two projects as well. Yeah, but it says 100%. And okay. it says right. view certificate. So you've already got your level three certificate. This one I do know f did get uh, filed. Yes. Yep, you're good. Okay. So if I had something here not checked. If it's not checked and it didn't say 100%. Right. Then, then I would then, launch that thing and. And you could go back and look and see what you had missed. Okay. All right. Carolyn, I have something that I'd like to share that Absolutely. I'm stuck with something. Okay. Well, allow, let's, let's allow get me to Joe done. sharing here. Yes. There you go. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, this is the error message that I'm getting on one of mine under my understanding my leadership styles. Uh -huh. I'm getting this. It says understanding your leadership style is incomplete suspended. Suspend. I've never seen that. Okay. Let me um can you get us back into your base camp? Sure. I think I have to. Have you paid your dues? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. That was just if, just if one question. So temporarily there might have been a shutdown. Yeah, there may have been a sp suspension. No, I um no. Okay. Um, well, we've had a no. club member or two get locked out due to a lapse in, you know, a, just a late dues payment. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, you're no. not sharing your screen anymore, Joe. No. I mean, uh, okay. Okay. So here is where I was. Mm -hmm. And it says progress. See, and I viewed that thing. It says 15 times, and I spent seven hours and four minutes viewing it. But on the progress, it says zero of one units complete. That does it, and I don't understand why that. Yeah, be. go down to view detail of modules. And that's when I get that error message. Are you also in printed path? No. Well, would this have anything to do with it? Okay, I was a member of um, three clubs and I retired, so I'm no longer a member of those clubs that I was on well, campus. Well, um, but your membership number is the same no matter how many clubs you're in? Yeah, so that's and, why I don't understand why. Well, that are you would logged into your active club? It did not give me an option. Yeah, that okay. could, because the other clubs, I'm not a member anymore. Okay, but how, where are you logged in? What club are you logged in with? Um, right Young here. Professional Toastmasters. It okay. didn't give me an option to log in as okay. a specific club to, like it used to. Go back to. to home. When I click on home, nothing is happening. Well, you have to make it drop down and, and catch home under home. There's another home when you click on home. So go back up to the top of your page. Scroll back up. It's a double. Now, yeah, put your put your cursor over the word that says home and don't click. Now yeah. go uh -huh. down below where it says home and click. Okay. All right. All right. So go. here I am. <clears throat> All right. Now return to my Toastmasters profile. Go over there. Okay. All right. Yeah, so you're logged in under Young Professional Southeast, right? Mm hmm That's the only club I'm a member of now. All right. So click on uh, go to my transcript from the Pathways box. See the up Pathways up. box enrolled in one path. Go to my transcript. I'm sorry. Where is that? Right underneath where you are right now. 
Enrolled in one enrolled pass, in one pass. Match transcript. <laughs> okay. Anything, Fran? Okay. All right. Now open your effective coaching. Is that the only path you're in? Yes. Okay. Open your curriculum. She worked with me individually. All right. Okay. Now open curriculum. Elizabeth, can you mute Fran? All right. So you're in level two, and it shows that you've not completed anything in level two, right? Mm hmm. All right, so if you were wanting to launch any piece of this, you could. Um, Do you want to me to say launch the training detail? No, go to launch. You just click on the part that says launch. And this is going to get you into your curriculum and the screens that you can scroll left and right and take your assessments and all of that. So if you click on that bottom select to move to another section, you'll see everything that's in this particular module. Click on the little triangle the little next to select. To I know, right. but you got, I got my stop, my stop, my, I got to make my screen smaller because. Uh, you got we're in your things. way again. Yeah. <laughs> We're in your way again. <laughs> and when I do that, I can't. I don't know. How that moves. Well, we can see it on our screen. Yeah, um, we can see it. It's just so if you go to where you see the pictures. Okay, of us, there we go. There you go. Okay, there you go. Okay. So click on assess your skills before. I did that. Okay. To select that. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you've already completed that, right? Yeah. Right. Click next. We'll just make sure you've got an answer for each one. I I some I have one time missed one. Okay. Now click on the arrow on the side. There you mm -hmm. go. Next one. Next one. This is communication. I'm on the leadership. The first one is the leadership, is not the communication. Okay, maybe so. So your score, part. your score in each communication style mm -hmm. are rated from highest to lowest based on your recent review and, okay, so click the little button, the little yellow triangle next to directions to, to drop it down. So it wants you to look at each one of these scores. Now, oh, see, so it says analytical five, and then there's stuff to read about analytical. Now click mm -hmm. on direct. I did that. No, no, go back. Back. Back, one more. Click on the word direct. Oh, you gotta put the directions down again. Okay, now click on the word direct. So see, it, need, it wants you to make sure you click on each one. I thought I did that. Okay, but you think that's why I was getting that? I, I don't know, but okay. click on support. I mean, that's, that's, that's my suggestion is that you'd have to actually, if you spent seven hours going through it, mm -hmm. I believe you, but it, it may be that you didn't check all the boxes. Now, somehow. Sometimes it wants you to interact with every screen before mm -hmm. it lets you. Yeah. Forward. So click on initiating. Okay. okay. Now go over. You click the right arrow. Yep. Now, again, on each of these, you click direct, click initiating. See how it changes the. Okay. Uh, down here next, yep. Yeah. Well, they really want you to know what direct initiating and analytical is. They yeah. Don't give you enough time, so they, so they. 
But I could have sworn, guys, I was on in the path. It's the leadership, understanding your leadership style first, and then understanding your communication. Okay, well then go style. back, go back because you've done your um, in effective coaching to understanding your communication style right now. And there's mm -hmm. probably another section that talks about um, leadership. So the, okay. right now you're in the understanding your communication style module. So you need to go back up to um, the top here. Where do I go back, guys? Um, okay, click. Here? No. no, you have to get out of this module. So you have to go back up to, where does she, how does she get back to home? Here. Okay, here we go. See, so under, understanding that, your leadership, okay, I'm sorry, that's where I was. Okay, understanding cool. your leadership style, okay, let's- That's the one you want to launch, because you launched yeah. communicating. Oh, did I, okay. Yeah, so this one will be leadership. <clears throat> See, I took the test. Well, it says submit, but I know I have taken this test. Okay. I mean, it's go ahead and get rid of the direction. Okay. All right, Carolyn, I'm going to let you take the con. I'm going to put myself on mute. That's okay. I got thrown out of the meeting somehow. <laughs> I was all of a sudden gone. <laughs> All right, so you're still going through, just making sure you've got all of them. Click on the no. little arrow next to directions. You gotta put the, the arrow, there you go. Now you're gonna have to click on each one of those. So if when you went through this, if you didn't click on each one of those, it, any one of them could hang you up. Okay. Well, if, if, if that's the case, let me, let me go back and, and read it again to be sure. Okay. Because I just don't want to click and, and miss reading. Right. And no, I know. I know. You, you, you actually want to learn it. I got yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll do that. And if okay. that doesn't work, then I'll, um, on the next session, I'll bring it up. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank so you. So you can stop sharing your screen. Okay. Another thing that will hang people up is if there is a requirement for you to do a role in any of this, and there's nothing in that page where we went to settings in your account, it's going to look there to see if you've been the Toastmaster tabletop, whatever the role uh, requirement is. So you might want to check your roles and see that you have a date in every one of those so that you don't get hung up in any of these modules because you don't have a leadership role checked in your in your settings in your account so pam would you recommend that each time you do a role you just go in and update whatever role you did with the most current date in that settings well i would just recommend you have a date in every one of those boxes okay no matter what the date is no matter what the date is gotcha yeah so yeah provided that you've done it yeah, so, well, yes. Yeah, once, yes. Once you've got the date in there, you don't need to keep updating it. Okay. So it's not like before where you have to do it a number of times. It's just any one time. Okay. Okay. Any other particular questions? No, I'm fully back. You might want to ask Faye. Faye, any other questions? No, you did great. I enjoyed and learned a lot, Carolyn. Thank did you. Did you so learn much. a lot? You don't. You don't want us to to watch you. Oh, walk around. <laughs> you watched me. <laughs> 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 okay, just making sure. Yes. If anybody you. else needs any help anywhere, you guys have got me for another 18 minutes, or I can let you go early. I, I think, think I'm done. We're going home. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys.
I hope you enjoyed it. I do need to share a couple of things with you really quickly before we go, though. Sorry, when I got uh, <laughs> I got kicked off, it threw some things out. All right. Oops, where's my cursor? There it is. I'm going to get down to. Golden rule of screen sharing. Pick what you want to share, but want to share what you pick. And there you go, Elizabeth. I will let you take it away. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I am posting in the chat the evaluation link. If you are able to scan the link, that would be great. You can take a picture of it. I've placed it in the, the chat. The one I just placed in the chat is our survey monkey. That is for evaluating this course. And we have started a Google Share Drive for whenever Carolyn or any of our other course instructors have handouts to share, then they will send it to us and I'll post it or upload it to our Google Share Drive for you to have at any time. I'll also post that in our chat now as well, in case if you can't download it from the slide. So the first one is the, well, let me separate them. That's yeah. Oh. <laughs> I sometimes I sometimes type space. I know. In between. I just to do that because every time I do it, it's going to uh, blend together here. So let's try it one more time. Okay. There we go. Yeah. If you I share will... two links back to back, it's hard to see them. It is. It, that is difficult. That was, okay. I'm going to do it again. I'll do the space. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> yeah. And then this is the survey monkey. Okay. <laughs> so we have a Google Drive for anyone who shares handouts. I will upload those to our District 56 online leadership um, electives uh, Google Share Drive for you. And then also our survey monkey for you to take the survey just to let us know how we're doing. And anything that you would like to take in the future would be greatly appreciated. And I would like to take this time to thank you again for your time and for being here. And most importantly, Carolyn, you've earned another badge. <laughs> I've added it to your list. And we want to thank you again, Carolyn, for being here and sharing your wealth of knowledge. And no, no worries. Hey guys, before you go, I do have another question. This is Fatima. It's a kind of a best practices question. Okay. So now, now that you have to have a password or a waiting room for your Zoom meeting, we don't, we, my club did not want to have to have a different meeting ID and password for every meeting. So how are other clubs doing it to get members, um, visitors that information? the password for the meeting? So I've seen a couple of things. I've seen them actually posted on their website. The password? Okay. Mm -hmm. I have seen that. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other one is if you tell guests that uh, ask them to go in to like go into your free toast host and ask for you know, information, then somebody mm -hmm. can email them back. You can send them the invite that has the password and everything all included. Carolyn? Yes. Uh, can I share my screen right quick and I'll show our... Abs absolutely. I will stop sharing and let you go mm -hmm. for it. All right. What do you see right now on my screen? Logos and design elements. Okay. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to go over here and go to Dining Out Toastmasters. And where we have our meeting information, I think we have the link. So you see we've hid the link, the password and all, but if you just click on this, it's going to take you to our meeting. So the way we did that was you highlight when you're 
in the edit function, you highlight the text and then you embed the link. So now all everybody's seeing is the link and not the actual information. Yeah, you can, you can okay. still. Okay. So do you know how to do that? I can figure it out, yeah. Yeah. I went to the meeting, so, yeah. So when you um, are in the admin, you have to log in as the admin. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's there, but it just doesn't say meeting it ID and doesn't password. doesn't show you the password yet. So, okay. so if I'm going to go in and edit that, Oh, where is it? I'm on the wrong page, aren't I? Uh-huh. I didn't go to the right page. <laughs> all right. It's all right. Go we love you back. anyway, Pam. Go back to the right page. Close. All right. So that, there you go. Mm -hmm. Go to the right page, and I'll get the right information, and that way that goes. All right. Lisa, so what I've done you... here is just I clicked this, and there's a... A link you see this link and if I click that it's going to show me the URL for the zoom meeting you see my zoom meeting in here you mm -hmm. so you would have to copy your your zoom link and paste it into this lookup this universal lookup here the URL then you click OK and what it's going to do is, is put that into that link okay and then you you would just save it it's it's the same way you would add a link. Scroll down just a second for like see the club calendar. See the club. What, so, so, no, no. Oh, like this? Yeah, it's the same thing you do to put like the club calendar link in there, or the mm -hmm. meetings at a glance link in. You know, anytime you're putting to where you click on something and it takes you there. It's the same same process. Yeah. So even if you were doing a word document, it's the same process to go get your link and then copy it into that that link to be able to show just the words and not the whole information behind the link because sometimes your link is like two miles long mm -hmm. you don't want that all showing up thank you pamela mm -hmm. we're going to stop share okay. up at the top there you go all right, folks. Well, I think we have officially spent our time. I hope it was beneficial to everybody and that everybody got something out of it. I know every time I learn something. And uh, mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so um, if you've got folks that are having trouble getting started and logged into Pathways, Again, that's one of the reasons that we set this up. So if you've got anybody in any of your clubs that you know is struggling to get signed up on a path, send them our way. Um, thanks to Fran, we now even know what it looks like when they're on a paper path. So, <laughs> so we'll recognize that better next time. And, uh, you know, thank you for being here. I'll see you guys somewhere soon. Carolyn, I just wanted to share really quick. I've had some questions. Okay. About the Google Share Drive. Can you see the Google Share Drive here? Not quite yet. Oh, there we go. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes, we can. So this is the Google Share Drive, and it's only one link to all online leadership elective programs. And mm -hmm. each person, each presenter, whenever there is a handout, I will create a separate folder for that one presenter. For example, we only have one presenter who's given us handouts and that is Max Lopez. And so that is why you see a Max folder. When you click on the folder, it will open up to two different handouts because that is all that he's given us here. Okay. And that, that is it. So it's just one Google Drive. It's not a Google Drive for each course or each presenter. It's one Google Drive and, e and a folder will be in each one. Okay. Faye, did that? Oh, go ahead, yeah. Carolyn. I was going to say, I haven't given out any handouts, but if you wanted to post the slides out there, you could. Okay. I just, Faye was not able to open yeah. up. 
um, she emailed me and said that she couldn't open up the folder. It was blank. And I just wanted to show her that if you just click on it, it'll open two of the files right here. Are you able to see that, Faye? Yes, now. <laughs> okay. Because we were going back and forth and I just thought, okay, if I just explain it on a screen, it's quick. <laughs> there you go. Okay. The other th hey, the other thing is when I click on that link for the survey, it give, gives me to log in as if I'm going to create a survey. It doesn't take me directly to your survey. I'm sharing that survey link screen. <clears throat> Can you see this right here? It says District 56 Online Leadership Electives Evaluation. Mm -hmm. That's the link. I'll post it one more time. It could have been tangled up with the other chat. But okay. I'll post it one more time. And this is what it com comes out to. When you click on that link, this is the page here that you'll see. No. No? No, it says you have already taken the survey, but I didn't. It says I have already taken the survey and I didn't. Well, that's this, awesome. Will somebody else try clicking on it? And, and you know it? what? It, for me as well, it says, do you want to create your own survey? You've mm -hmm. already taken the survey. Want to create yeah. your own surveys? I know I just took mine. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. Are you okay. using the same link for all the say all the classes? I believe it is. It's one link for. Uh, but maybe I'll bet that's it only why. lets you take the survey one time. Okay. We'll check the settings on that. Okay. Yeah, because if I share my screen, um, if you close your screen for just a second. Okay. Let me stop sharing. Yeah. This is what I get. I think that's what she's getting as well. Yes. Yeah, you've already taken the survey. Want to create your own surveys? So um, if you're using the same link for all the classes, it may, it may not let them do a survey for more than one of the classes they take. Okay, I'll go into it after this and look. Thank yeah. you. No worries. But I was able to take it today. But have you taken any other the link that she just posted? Yeah. So. I will email the ones here in the room once <laughs> going on with the link. Okay, thank you. You're so welcome. We definitely appreciate your feedback. So let yeah. us know. Let us know. Okay. Thank you. Enjoy thank the rest you of your day. Much. You too. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, Carolyn. Have a good one, Joe. Me too.